And back at Veterans Stadium, that was the Berwyn United Methodist Choir with a terrific rendition of our national anthem as the Philly Fanatic has a little fun with them down there on the field. And we've had a great time here already tonight. I hope you watch the Upper Deck Heroes of Baseball game. That was really a good time down on the field. A lot of people here tonight having fun and uh, everybody talking about how much enjoyment they got out of the whole thing. Uh, I think players sometimes don't appreciate the game when they're around it and you really see it when they get out of the game and they come back for these things and they realize how much fun it is to be back in uniform and to be around their teammates. And like I said, sometimes they don't realize it until it's a little bit too late. And that was a good bunch back in 1983 and uh, they performed well out on the field tonight against that other team. Terry Mulholland getting the mound ready. Terry Mulholland tonight against Jack Armstrong. And let's go to Sherwin-Williams starting lineup tonight for the visiting Florida Marlins, managed by Renee Latchman. Chuck Carr leads off in center field. Rich Renteria at second base. Bat second. Jeff Conine will be in left field. He at third. Orestes Destrade is the first baseman. He'll hit cleanup. Benito Santiago, the catcher, bats fifth. Junior Felix in right field will hit sixth. Alex Arias at third base, bat seventh. Walt White's a shortstop. It's eighth on the mound, the right hand. For the All-American boy himself, Jack Armstrong will pitch at bat ninth. Defensively for the Phillies tonight, Milt Thompson in left, Lenny Dykstra in center, Jim Eisenreich, the right fielder. Around the diamond, John Cruck at first base, Mickey Morandini at second, Mariano Duncan the shortstop at third base, Kim Batiste behind the plate, Darren Dalton on the mound, the left-hander Terry Mulholland. Mulholland, 6'3", 215 pounder, 30 years of age, now makes his home in Scottsdale, Arizona. There are the numbers on the Phil's left-hander. Terry trying to become a 500 pitcher lifetime tonight. He's 53 and 54 lifetime. He'll be making his first career appearance ever against the Florida Marlins. Well, Holland was scratched from the start when the Phillies were in Miami. That was when he was having trouble with his foot. But he is fine. He was sitting with us in the dugout for a while tonight watching the Upper Deck Heroes of Baseball game in between interviews. He'd sit down beside me and then someone would come in with interview him and Terry Mulholland would sit down again. A lot of pitchers on the night of a game, they're tucked away back in the clubhouse. They don't want to be bothered with anything. He was down there watching the old-timers game. Here are the umpires, the veteran Ed Montague behind the plate. Mike Winters at first base. Brian Gorman at second base and the crew chief. Bruce Fremley over at third. And we're ready to get underway with Chuck Carr leading it off. Carr batting at 260, 316 from the right side. 230 left-handed. Carr with 28 stolen bases. Which leads the league by one over Vince Coleman. And the first pitch of the ball game on the way from Mulholland, and it's fouled back into the crowd. Big crowd here tonight at Veterans Stadium. As they showed up early for the upper deck here was a baseball game. And followed by the Phillies and the Marlins. St. Louis Cardinals won their game this afternoon, in case you missed it, at Wrigley Field. So they now trail the Phillies by nine games here at game time. Carr swings and misses at a breaking ball. Happy birthday tonight to Joe Dawson of Strathmere in New Jersey. 59 years of age. Got a nice note here from Maggie Dawson. So happy birthday to you, Joe. No balls, two strikes to Carr. He jumped back. He thought that pitch was inside. Ed Montague rings him out. Strikeout number one on the leadoff man. And you see that pitch? <laughs> Carr couldn't believe it. He thought it was inside. Mulholland gets a strikeout. Terry Mulholland's been on kind of a strikeout run lately. He had 14, 9, and 4 at his last three starts. He throws strike one. To Rich Renteria. Renteria played the last two years in the Mexican League. He has been in the major leagues briefly with Pittsburgh and Seattle. Hard ground ball on one hop to Duncan. To Cruck. Two outs. Two up and two down here in the first inning. And Jeff Conine will bat. Conine's been batting fifth in the lineup in the other two games and tonight in the three hole. Conine batting at 285 with a couple of homers and 23 runs batted in. 
Terry Mulholland has had great control. I mentioned the strikeout run he's been on. Plus, he had a uh, walkless streak going. It was broken at 26 in his last time out when he walked a batter in the first inning at Montreal. Gary Maddox has joined us as Jay is still not back up from down on the field. This will be one of my three. <laughs> one of my three innings here. I'll, that would be incorrect. I'm going to do one, two, and three tonight. Let Jay... Uh... Hey, you're hatting up. <laughs> Jeff, fun tonight? Oh, yeah. I, I don't really have a lot of fun playing in those games, Chris. I'll be honest with you. But seeing the guys, I... Uh, you know, last night we had a, a banquet and a reception was real nice seeing some of the guys. I saw your number a few times. Jason Ball's out there. Yeah, that Gary and I were talking out there. It seemed like every time you move one way, the guys hit it the other way, just like old times. <laughs> That's right. I saw 34 and 31 quite a bit. And that was really typical of the 83 season until we really got focused and, uh, and you know, got our act together. Yep. Two balls and one strike to Conine and Mulholland gets it over and he swings and misses. Joseph Kazmarczyk, happy birthday tonight, number 76 to Joe. <laughs> that was a quick inning for Gary. <laughs> this is nuts around here tonight. Well, we're going to keep Gary. Jay has just come into the booth. Nice having all these broadcasters up here. Guys, you can just plug in at any time. 3-2. Foul away. Matthew says he's going to come up and take everybody's job later. <laughs> you know, he's always been kind of a... Wallflower. Well, you know, Gary's the official host of this upper deck thing, so uh, uh -huh. I imagine he'll be tied up for a while. Yeah, he'll be over there playing host, right? Three balls and two strikes to Conine. Must have been a little high, and he walks it. Close. So Conine walks, walk number one, issued by Mulholland, and here is Orestes Destrade, a switch hitter, the first baseman. You know, Conine threw a walk a little bit inside that time, up a little bit, I would say, but Mulholland. He got Carr on that pitch looking the same type of setup. He tried to do the same thing with Conine there, but missed a little bit up. Destrade at 256 right-handed, 250 from the left side. We're just underway. As Mulholland makes a quick throw over to first. Conine not off very far. Game starting a half hour later tonight because of the upper deck baseball game prior to this one. Well, we have to uh, really have to mention the ovation Mike Smith got out there. That's nice, yeah. Wow. And Bond got a nice reception, too. You know, everybody was wondering what would happen when Bond Hayes showed up. There's Cookie Rojas going through the signs and Conine leading off. And the fans were, were nice. Most of them cheered. You know what else was funny? <laughs> None of the guys remember Darren Dalton was on the team. That's right. <laughs> they said, when did he start hitting? <laughs> <laughs> they remember him from spring trainings, and they remember him from being around, you know, as the guy that was in camp. But, you know, he had a way about him. Even the even the older players knew that he was going to be a good player. Baptiste is going to have to hurry. Estrada took kind of a circle route down to first base, and he got him. That'll do it in the first. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left to the bottom of the first. No score. Do you want your car now? If you want your car done right, it has to be done by the right people. We take care of our customers. We do the job right. Quality all the way. Experience counts. The customer comes first. Satisfaction guaranteed. We're only as good as our people. That's why Jiffy Lube is America's favorite oil change. We got experience at Jiffy Trouble with heartburn? Well, you could change your job. Change your lifestyle. Change your diet. A bon appetit. Or, better still, reach for Rolaids. It absorbs acid fast to bring 100% relief to millions. So maybe you can't change your life, but you can get relief in original and calcium rich. Rolaids spells relief. Mm. When you're thirsty, you need a squirt. Because there's nothing like our refreshing blend of citrus flavors. Give your thirst a squirt. 
And here's your Sherwin-Williams starting lineup tonight for the Phillies, managed by Jim Fergosi. Lenny Dykstra leads off in center field. Mariano Duncan, the shortstop, will bat second. John Cruck, the first baseman, hits third. Darren Dalton catches and bats fourth. Jim Eisenreich, the right fielder, hits fifth. Milt Thompson in left field will bat sixth. Kim Batiste, the third, hits seventh. Mickey Morandini, the second baseman, bats eighth on the mound. Terry Mulholland, eight and five tonight. He'll bat nine. Defensively for the Florida Marlins around the outfield, Jeff Conine in left field, Chuck Carr in center, and Junior Felix in right field. At first base, Arrestes Destrade. The second baseman is Rich Renteria, Walt Weiss at shortstop, and at third base tonight for an injured Jeff Mag uh, Magadan is Walt Weiss, is uh, Arias, Alex Arias. Behind the plate, Benito Santiago, and on the mound, Jack Armstrong. Dave Magada not able to play with a bad elbow. Here is Jack Armstrong, six foot five, 220 pounder, 28 years of age, out of Englewood, New Jersey. Now makes his home in Florida. Number one pick of Cincinnati in June of 1987, the 18th overall pick in the draft that year. Here you see the numbers on him. He's been struggling lately. He's lost three straight, four out of five. One of his losses this year coming to the Phillies and Tommy Green, six to nothing on May the 18th at Florida. Six and two third innings, eight hits, six earned runs, three walks and four strikeouts. Lenny Dykstra will lead it off. Jay Johnstone is with us. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Luckily, Jack Armstrong, I have to tell you, fastball, curveball. Slider and change moves the ball around a lot, throws a lot of changeups to left hand batters. What a great time we had today. <laughs> that was fun. Dykstra has been hot, leading the league in runs with 59 of them. And he's walked 50 times. So Lenny getting on base a lot and scoring a lot of runs for the Phillies. Pitch misses inside. Lifetime against Armstrong, though. He's just two for 12. One ball and one strike to Dykstra. No score in the bottom of the first inning. I had an old Dodger fan tell me today up in Hazleton that Lenny Dykstra reminds him like the old Dodger leadoff guy, Maury Wells. He'd get on base, either a walk, he'd let the ball hit him, or he'll, he'll get a base hit, he'll steal a base, and the, and the Phillies will score a run by either a sacrifice fly or a ground out. Or, it's the old Dodger way. Get on base, steal second, third, sacrifice fly, get in. Or he might do a long ball to deep right field. Back goes Felix. He doesn't see it, and that's the reason why. It's way out of here. Home run, Lenny Dykstra. He leads off the game with a home run. Is Well, like I said, uh, Lenny Dykstra, the old Dodge way, hits a lot of home runs when he leads off. Kind of like uh, Ricky Henderson. And with that home run, another $200 goes to the Child Guidance Clinic. Compliments of Chinto on this home run by Lenny Dykstra. By the way, that's the 72nd home run on the year for the Phillies. $14,400 already donated by Chento. That's his seventh of the year. Did you see Felix? Yeah, he has no clue. He didn't know where it went. No. He was looking to the center field of the car for help. And that's why he didn't know where it was, because it was about ready to <laughs> land right below the Mets logo out there in deep right center field. Lenny Dykstra with his seventh home run, and the Phillies jump to a quick one to nothing lead. He's been hitting the long ball lately. Duncan, the batter, he hits a fly ball to right. Here comes Felix. He sees this one. However, it's a foul ball and out of play. Armstrong is now given up 11 home runs in 88 innings pitch. He gave up 23 and 166 and two-third last year with Cleveland. But the thing about him is all 11 of those homers have come in the last 49 innings that Jack Armstrong's been on the mound. That has really hurt him. The long yes, ball has been slugging him. And the problem that Armstrong has had is the fact that he keeps getting the ball up in his strike zone. He's not going to blow the fastball by you. What he has to do is pitch to spots, change speeds, but when he gets the ball up, he's had trouble. I think they're announcing that Steichers' 11th career leadoff home run. We'll check on that for you, but that sounded like what the PA system was just saying. And a great night for baseball here because it's very humid. The balls have been carrying, as you saw in the uh, Heroes Legends game. They were carrying for you guys tonight. Yes, they were. Except for Marty Bice from Tumia changeup. <laughs> two balls and two strikes. It was leadoff home run career-wise number 11 for Lenny Dykstra. Cardinals win today 6-4 to four at Wrigley. Phillies have a nine-game lead coming into play tonight in the National League East. And they have a 1-0 lead right out of the shoot on Dykstra's home. 
broken back ground to short. Weiss on the run. Throws. Got him. One away. That was a good pitch by Armstrong because he ran the fastball in on Duncan's hands. Duncan likes the ball up a little bit out over the plate. Duncan has kind of a big swing for a small guy. And he got tied up on that running fastball inside. I think he broke his bat on it. Send back. Best wishes tonight to Karen Vance in Reading Rehab Hospital recovering from surgery. I hope Karen is feeling better real soon. I hope she enjoys the ball game tonight. John Kruk, three walks in the game last night. Kruk is now the league leader in walks with 56 of them. He's also fourth in the league in hitting with that 360 average. Andres Galarraga continuing to lead at 429. an off-speed pitch. Johnny was going for the downs on that one, wasn't he? Jack Armstrong. Three years at Ryder College, one year at Oklahoma. Another breaking ball missed outside. This guy exploded on the scene in 1990 and then had elbow problems mm -hmm. later in the season and has never been the same since. How many times have you seen a young pitcher come into baseball with all kinds of talent and all of a sudden have some freak arm injury and then it almost ends his career and he's never the same pitcher after that. Kruk going after a pitch with, that was a breaking ball really Armstrong pulled the string on this one. We'll show it to you right here. Look how he throws this curveball way way slower than Kruk expected and John way in front of that one. And here is Darren Dalton who was introduced for that 83 team tonight. Dalton at 266, 15 homers, 57 RBIs, ties him for the league lead with Matt Williams. And he has two career homers off this guy. Five for 14 lifetime with two homers and four runs batted in. Jack Armstrong throws strike one. Armstrong lost his last outing, six to three at Wrigley Field. Five innings, eight hits, four earned runs. He walked four, struck out just one. Strike called to Dalton and he thought the pitch was outside. There's Lenny Dykstra who's gotten the Phillies off and winging tonight with a leadoff home run to right center. Kind of funny as Dalton was introduced tonight Bill Madlock looked up and says is that is that Darren Dalton the guy that catches for him? He said well yeah. He, said, he can't play in this game. He already shoved him out of the lines. <laughs> get, get back in the dugout. Get him out of there right? Yeah. <laughs> Larry Anderson was out there tonight making pitching changes. It's at Lenny and Duncan talking over what they've seen from Armstrong so far. I know Dalton made a mention of the fact he said, well, you know, Anderson's older than you are. You know, so everybody had a good laugh. But well, Anderson could have played in the 73 right. old-timers game. Right. One ball, two strikes to Dalton. Outside. Two balls and two strikes. As Jay mentioned, it was a very warm, muggy night here at the Vet. Great night for the hitters. Not so hot for the pitchers if they have to work real hard. Here's the 2 2. Hit hard, but right at the second baseman, Rich Renteria, over to Destrati, and that'll do it for the Phillies in the first. They pick up a run on that guy's leadoff homer, his seventh of the year. A run on a hit, no errors, and nobody left. But the 1 1 0 Phillies. Do Texaco Food Marts really have everything? Oh, they have gum, cheese, candy. Many reasons I come to Texaco. Chips, cereals, nice people. There are many, 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 many reasons. You want it, they got it. If they don't have it, you don't need it. Isn't that candy that pulls product out? Did I skip something? Visit your Texaco station and Food Mart for unbeatable System 3 gasoline. Pop comes here for System 3, and I come here for Pop. Right, Mom? And just about everything else. I'd recommend it to anybody. And I would, too. Yo, Phillies fans, here's the pitch. You, the Phillies, San Diego. It's the Jiffy Lube Coca-Cola Phillies Road Trip. Go to Jiffy Lube and you could win an all-expense-paid trip for four to the Phillies Padres game in sunny San Diego. Round-trip airfare, deluxe hotel accommodations, and meals are all included. But hey, you can't win if you don't enter at any participating Jiffy Lube before June 30th. The Phillies are making fireworks during the games, and we've got two spectacular fireworks shows after the San Diego games. Friday, July 2nd, when a doubleheader starts at 435, and Saturday, July 3rd at 705. Then all kids 14 and under get a free batting helmet when the series wraps up Sunday night, July 4th at 805. Two fireworks spectacular, three batting helmets, great baseball. Call 463-1000. 
hey, if you like Cento, Italian food, you're going to love going to your favorite store, going to that aisle where all the Italian food is, and looking at all those Cento labels everywhere. Over 100 of them on your grocer's shelves today. So pick out some fine Cento food products at your local grocery store. Benito Santiago will lead it off. Santiago, Felix, and Arias to face Terry Mulholland here in the second inning. Santiago ejected from the game last night by home plate umpire Bruce Friendly. And Mulholland starts him with a good breaking ball that he swings over. Happy birthday tonight to Thomas Bassetti of Chestnut Hill, 80. 80, wow, congratulations. And to Mark Kahn, who is 37. That's your age, right? I wish. <laughs> I was 37 in that eight with that 83 club. <laughs> one ball and one strike now on Santiago. We need to the longtime Padre coming over here and very happy to be in a Florida uniform. Well, Holland sinks it to him off the mound quickly and he can't get him. He was going to tag him. And then Santiago was by him, and then Mulholland couldn't get anything on the throw to Kruk. So it's a base hit for Santiago. Boy, you talk about a gimme infield base hit. You can see Terry trying to t tag him, then realize he couldn't do anything. He couldn't throw it because he was running behind Santiago, so he had to try and throw it underhand. He couldn't really turn to throw. He didn't have enough time, so watch. The only thing he could do was try and whip it around him. It looked like, I know what happened, it hit off the side of his leg. And he's out anyway. <laughs> He hit, yeah. plays out. he hit it off the side of his leg. That's why he didn't get anything on it, but that fooled everybody. So Santiago on with an infield hit, the first hit of the game for Florida. And here is Junior Felix. 233 right-handed, 230 left-handed. Felix out of the Toronto organization, also played with California. Has some power. He's hit seven home runs, knocked in 22. Nobody out here in the second. Fills with a one to nothing lead on Dykstra's leadoff homer. The on deck batter is third baseman Alex Arias. Dave Magadan not playing again because of a sore elbow. And that kind of hurts his ball club because he's got a pretty good stick. Look at that pickoff move. Well, now Santiago got back. Well, with that good step off move and Benito knows he's in trouble and just back in time that's what Santiago's done to base runners over the years make them look bad throwing from his knees and getting guys it's first second third hit hard to right field eyes and right got a good jump and he makes another terrific play boy Jim Eisenreich is playing the heck out of right field and he just saves Mulholland a lot of trouble Yes, he did, and the key, as you said, Chris, was the fact that he got a good jump. Jim really, off with the crack of the bat, went back, picked up, had a beat on the ball, and you can see he knew exactly where the fence was as he leaped up. He turned around, saw the fence, and put his hand up to block himself from running into it. Nice play, Eisenreich. Continues to play outstanding mm -hmm. defense whenever they put him out there. Santiago had to scurry back to first. Here's Alex Arias playing at third base, formerly with the Cubs. Arias, a 276 hitter with a homer and 12 runs batted in. And Will Holland misses low. On deck is Walt Weiss, a switch hitter. You know, I had a chance to talk to Renee Latchman while we were playing this old timers game, and I said, uh, and I said, you guys are playing pretty good, surprising a lot of people. He says, Jay, he says, these guys really don't know how well they can play. They're going out, they're having fun. I'm trying to keep a loose ball club. He said, of course, the key to our success, obviously, is Harvey in the bullpen. He said, but, and they know that if they can get a lead to the eighth inning, we got a heck of a chance of winning this ball game. So these guys are going out, trying to get some runs, you know, by scratching and kicking, fighting, bunting, getting on any way they can, hoping they can get to that eighth inning because they have a great deal of confidence in Brian Harvey, and obviously it's turned out very well for him. Hatch was always writing something down during a game. Line drive, left center field. This is trouble. Thompson gets to it and cuts it off. He'll throw back to second. Good play, Milt Thompson. Keeps Arias at first base. Moving over to third is Santiago. That's an example of knowing what base to throw to. You're so correct because what has happened is with that play by Thompson, 
the Phillies now have still kept the double play in order. So if Mulholland can get a ground ball to one of his infielders, they got a great chance of maybe turning the double play. And they can play a little bit in on why shorten up. He's not going to power the ball by the infielder. So that's why you want to keep the double play in order. And Thompson did exactly that, getting the ball quickly back to his infielders. And Weiss the batter. 255 right handed, 316 from the left side. Phillies have the infield at double play depth. Hoping they can get one here and get out of the inning. There you see the infield. Weiss this year has grounded into three double plays. The leader on their ball club is Destrada. He's grounded into 10 of them. Wow. Well, the Phillies have turned 50 of them, so let's see if they can shoot for 51. That's a base hit, and the game is tied. Well, Holland got that ball up in the strike zone. Santiago scores. Arias stops it. Second. And it's 1 1. That was just a pitch that Mulholland wanted to get either inside or down a little bit. He didn't do it. We'll show you the, the location. Watch where this pitch is. Breaking ball right out over the plate. Now that pitch is the one that normally Terry gets down and in, and he just hung it out there. So Armstrong, the batter, will probably be up there to bunt with one out. He has sacrificed one time this year. He's just a 147 hitter. And the Phillies will look for the bunt from him. He is around the bunt. Kruk will run Mulholland off it. Throws the first. Got him. And the runners move up into scoring position. Good bunt by Armstrong. Kruk really cheating in on the play. Thought he might have had a chance at Arias going to third, but Mulholland, as you can see, quickly off the mound, too. Almost the collision. Kruk had to call him off. A nice bunt, as you see by Armstrong. You see how far the Kruk got in? Then he had to run Terry off the base and then make the throw to first. So there you see Cookie Rojas talking to his base runner, Arias, at third. Weiss is at second. And Chuck Carr, the batter. Carr struck out to lead off the game. He thought the pitch was inside. And Mulholland comes right back in there again and misses ball one. 1-1 one, one ball game here in the second inning. A run on three hits and no errors for Florida. 1-1-0 one, one oh for the Phils. Jack Armstrong and Terry Mulholland. Breaking ball, swing and a miss. Holland really kind of got that one up there in a hurry, didn't he? Yeah, he's gotten hurt on some balls up in this inning, as you said, and, and the ball that the Eisenreich caught was a pitch up. Good block there by Dalton. As Mulholland struggling a little bit with location here in this inning. He was very sharp in the first. That's another thing that people fail to realize about Darren Dalton is the fact that pitchers have a lot of confidence in him knowing that if they want to throw a breaking ball low, get it in, even possibly bounce it, they got a catcher behind the plate that can block the ball. Big difference to a pitcher knowing that he can have that confidence in his catcher, so if he does make a mistake, it won't really hurt him. Two and one to Carr. That pitch was up, and he hits it to right field. Here comes Eisenreich again, and he's there. That's a fair ball, and Eisenreich runs it down. In the inning for Florida, a run on three hits, no errors. Two left. We're tied at one, going to the bottom of the second. From 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue to right here in Pennsylvania, people are searching for new choices in health care. The costs are strangling me. Which inspired Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield to create the new personal choice. Seems like you always have to give something up. A health plan that gives people the benefits of an HMO. No one has the right to tell me what doctor I can see. Without asking them to give up their freedom. Personal choice. The health plan that controls costs, not people. Budweiser and the Phillies are celebrating the 4th of July holiday weekend with the Bud Summer Baseball Bash. It's a special tent party outside Veterans Stadium on Monday, July 5th before the Phillies-Dodgers game. Right now, be the 17th caller to 1-800-432-1745 and win four tickets to the party and the game. You'll join us for food, music, and surprises, and then watch the Phillies play the Dodgers. It's the Bud Summer Baseball Bash with Budweiser and the Bills. So bring on the Dodgers and bring on the Bud. 
How about this Ford Ranger XLT? How about this Chevy S10 Tahoe pickup for $1,500 less? The XLT's got power steering. So is the S10. AM, FM, stereo cassette. Sounds the same to me. Sliding rear window. Likewise. Plus, the S10 has more horsepower and 24-hour roadside assistance for $1,500 less with current incentives. Want to see our glove compartment? Check them out. It's your choice, America. But your local Chevy Geo dealers think there's really no comparison. The Phillies get down to business against the Braves Wednesday, June 23rd, 1235 in a midday, midweek business person special compliments of Melon DSFS. Fun in the sun. Pitching against power. Call 463-1000. And back at Veterans Stadium with Jay Johnstone, Chris Wheeler, and former PRISM announcer Mike Schmidt. Hi, right, guys. <laughs> Great to be here. I could not resist stopping up to get a little air, a little air time. A little air time? <laughs> you got a couple of things coming up pretty soon, don't you? Sure do, Jay. I got a big golf tournament coming up next weekend. I appreciate you asking me that so I can plug it a little bit. Yeah, out there at uh, Commonwealth National Country Club in Horsham. We hope that every one of these people listening to Phillies Prism broadcast shows up. Well, I'm really amazed at some of the big time names you get out of these golf courses. This one's lined to right for a base hit by Eisenhower. This guy, this guy's unbelievable, Chris. He just makes great catches, hits the ball at the 350 clip. Yeah. I mean, you know, he doesn't do anything wrong. Yeah, he keeps getting his hit. Speaking of hits, Jay, uh, Michael, when you got that hit the, in the game today, you, you, you looked a little excited as we look at Eisenreich putting this ball in the play and breaking ball to right field. Wheels, you got it. You have to be in my body to realize how far I am from having any ability to play the game of baseball right now. I mean, I, both of my legs were cramping. I took four swings in the batting cage, and both of my legs were cramping just swinging at the ball. And uh, you're not playing at a comeback. Huh? Oh. <laughs> Remember Boa's first ball? Right. I just went over there. I said, I got this one. Just stuck my glove out to catch it. And it was, that, it, you know, it was down the left field line. Was that a seam ball or did you just Sure. Oh, it? yeah. It hit a seam. I, I was it hit a seam about and that. jumped. It just yeah, yeah. jumped just right by me. Same old stuff, huh? Yeah, those ground crew guys, they, <laughs> they could definitely do a better yeah. job with that seam there at third base. That's what we great. said down there. Wicked. Yeah. Wicked. We went to grab it. The ball was already by. Right. Everybody went. It was oh. wicked. I didn't think the game had started at that point. Bang, there's a line. Yeah, there it is. See that seam right there? That's yeah. what I said when we were sitting down in the dugout. I said, well, Michael's going to blame the ground crew for that one. <laughs> is that Larry in the truck? Uh, Larry Rosen is down there, yes. Larry? John Sobotkin is down there with us right He's now. He's the man, Larry. That's our man. That's right. Him and John do a great job with us down there. Milt no, Thompson, the batter, and the count is now one and one on Milt. By the way, I want you to know this is my neighborhood ball club you feel that you're playing. That's right. That's right. That's right. I would be sitting right gone, now in front of my widescreen TV. Have you gone down to the watching this park? game? Have yeah, you, I went you, to opening day. Okay. We thought we might see you when the club was down. Maybe next time. Huh? Well, um, I've already. I know your schedule, and I won't be there. I'll be in the Bahamas. Oh, God willing, I'll be in the Bahamas on a little vacation. A little golf when too? you guys come down there. A little golf. Too? No, you don't golf in the Bahamas. You got that. You got that big piece of bait on that uh, on that reel. <laughs> looking for the most perch. <laughs> Santiago's those snap Marlin from behind the plate. But no, I got to tell you, I've been following the Marlins uh, since the beginning of the year. Started with the opening game uh -huh. and known quite well. And uh, as everyone knows, they're a tremendous success story. Oh, everybody's thrilled with the way their pitching has come along. And of course, we, I talked to Lashman a day, and, and the team is so excited the way Harvey's pitched for him in relief. Big plus for Aren't, this. Isn't their bullpen like second or third in the league and uh, earn run average? Harvey doesn't give up anything. Thompson takes it for a strike. He can't believe it. And it counts two and two. If you guys looking around at Montague tonight. I'll tell you, the closer means so much in modern day baseball. 20 years ago, it wasn't that big no. of a deal, right? But well, you can that's see because now they took the guy that couldn't make the starting four or five in the rotation and made him a closer along there. Today, it's a specialty. Two balls and two strikes now to Thompson. That's what Ron Reed told us tonight down on the bench that when uh, he came over here, they told him he was going to be a starter, and then Danny made him a reliever, and he sulked that spring. And he turned out to be a good thing for him because he was a heck of a relief pitcher. That's right. Probably one of the greatest things that ever happened to Ron Reed. But he was a perfect example of a guy that just seemed to pit when he started. He always seemed to make a mistake, run into a bad inning, never was a, a great starter. Six eight six seven. Hey, give us one inning and throw as hard as you can. <laughs> That's what he did. Did a great job for the Phillies. Well, you, you really want to know the key was the fact that since I lockered next to him, <laughs> and he had those big feet, 
He finally learned to control how to use them. You know, when you have a size 18 shoe, it's a little tough out there to put it on the pitching rope. But I work with him a lot, and he's probably listening to this, and I'll see him in the fourth inning. There goes Eisenreich, and Thompson fouls it off. Might have chased a bad ball. They were running on the play, and the count still full. We're in the second inning. Chris Wheeler with Jay Johnstone. Our special guest, Michael Jack Schmidt, has joined us. Had a nice visit with uh, Milty. There's your old buddy. Yeah, there's my old buddy. <laughs> Hit that line drive right at me. That's right. And he was chirping the whole way for the next two he minutes. He played a nice game, by the way. Yes, he did. A little a nice shaky. backhand double play. and a he, looked, he looked like his old self on the pop-ups, yeah, right? Yeah, a little shaky on that pop-up. Shaking my head, down. right? <laughs> what he did on pop-ups was look for you. <laughs> but you know, for you a know, while. And then when I got older, I started looking for whoever was around me. I didn't like him when I got older. You know what I wanted to, to point out, and, and I hope so many people were watching, the fact that base is loaded, he backhanded the ball, made a perfect throw to home, to Larry. get the force out, Larry Bowler did. Ball four. So the Phillies yeah, have something. You know, he knew that was a winning run, too, right? Yep. He knew that was a winning run because his head's in the game, in game situations. This is a big thing for the Phillies, Mike, this year. They talk about how well they hit, but you know, all of them have a good command of the strike zone. They watch the ball well, they take a lot of walks, and that's why the Phillies lead the league in on base percentage. They're not afraid to take a pitch, take a walk. Kim Batista. Well, I always third. Mm -hmm. Throughout my career, uh, I had to explain to many people the value of the base on balls. Uh, so many times I was maligned for, for not swinging That's at right. that 3-1 slider, uh, right. you know, for taking that base on balls. And all that did was create something for the guys behind me and allow me to score over 100 runs pretty much uh, every year. And well, people have there's to, nothing better than a walk. Well, people, it, it, it's as good as a base hit. I mean, you're on first base. What's the difference if you walk to first base or you hit a line drive to center for a single? You know, you're still on base. One of the guys that uh, was known to anyone who knows anything about baseball is one of the greatest hitters ever, Ted Williams. Walked more than anybody, mm -hmm. and his the walk was a major part of his whole hitting philosophy. Sure, he made him throw strikes to him. Well, John Crutch leads the league in walks for the Phillies. I don't think anybody would not call him an aggressive hitter. He leads the league in walks, and uh, Darren Dalton's knocked Darren in 57 Dalton. runs. A lot of the reason because of Crutch being on base. Right. And, and, and Lenny Dykstra. It, it's all a uh, you know, it's like a building block. The two the lineup. Two on for the Phillies. A count one and one on Kim Batiste. Mike Schmidt has joined us for this half inning. The Phillies are tied in this ball game right now. One one. Batiste beats it out in front of the plate. Santiago will let it go foul. And the counts one and two. The young man was doing a great job, Michael, playing third base for the Phillies before he got hurt. Dave Hollins. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah, I know. And uh, 47 ribbies right now. Uh, probably would have around 50, 51 in the top 10. Um, he's a gamer. I know that much about about Dave Hollins. And uh, let's just hope he heals up real quick and solid, and uh, he can still get. Well, how many games do we have left? Wheels about halfway point. You know, he he can still get his uh, you know 80, 85 more ball games in this year, and still uh, salvage a good year. This is game 67 tonight. Yeah, it's a little over half still. One ball, two strikes now on Batiste. There's nobody out. Phillies have Eisenreich at second and Thompson at first. And Mickey Morandini waiting on deck. Nice breeze starting to blow through the park now. Feels good. Out of way. If you want to look at a positive side of that is the fact that Dave Hollins is going to come back fresh after the All-Star break where there, as we see him in the dugout now, where some of our guys might be a little tired. Here comes Hollins down the stretch run, and he'll be strong, he'll be steady, he'll be fresh, and he's going to give the team a big lift. No question. That's a good point, Jay. And you mentioned walks. There's a guy that will take a walk, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. And he's batting cleanup this year, so the Phillies obviously miss him a lot. Here we go again with a 1-2 to Batiste. Armstrong misses outside. You know what the Phillies have? I notice it. A tremendous left-handed hitting attack. I mean... There are very few right-handed pitchers, if there are any, in, in the National League that can, that, that can walk through that Phillies lineup. Well, I'll tell you what they better have is something off speed <laughs> that they can get over. And over the years, remember back in our heyday, we were always such a strong right-handed hitting team. Yes. And which is what made Jay uh, so valuable to us. Jay, McBride, LeFay, people like that. Uh, just, you know, to help pick me up, <laughs> and the, and the right-handed hitters who, well, yeah, the Maddoxes, year. the Matthews, people like that, you need those left-handed hitters because obviously three out of four pitchers are, are right-handed. 
But we'll see if they run them here. Three balls, two strikes, nobody out. Two men on base. As the fans look on. No comment on that, guys. <laughs> See if they go. They do not. And Baptiste hits it to right. Little off the end. Little off the end. Yep. It'll be enough to move Eisenreich over to third base as he tags and gets over. And if they were running, he probably wouldn't have been able to do that. We'll try and pick it up for you again. Here's the swing. You're right, Mike. Hit it towards the end of the bat, not on the sweet part. Consequently, didn't get it to the track. I but, at but. You know, you, you bottom line guy, you look at what, what happened there, and, that, and that's a good at bat. Uh, if that scoreboard's correct, that was with no out, so he definitely advanced that runner, and mm -hmm. he, he did his job in that at bat. In a tie ball game, we're in the second inning, and Morandini, the batter, at 235 with a homer and 13 runs batted in. Take that, take that one step further. If he wasn't thinking, the right things he may not have even made contact with that ball right it may have turned into a dribbler somewhere in the infield but he was thinking the other way straight away right center and that's what allowed him to get the job done. The on deck batter is Terry Mulholland. Phillies this year are 30 wins and 14 losses against the right handers. We're going to talk about their left hand hitting attack. They're hurting a little bit in their lineup because Chamberlain is out who helps them against left right. handers and Hollands is a tremendous right-handed batter. So they're missing both of those guys. Phillies will face one of the few guys left in the league that you hit off, Michael, tomorrow, Charlie Huff. Wheels, I don't think I ever faced Charlie Huff in the major leagues. And he was a reliever. Jay, you know better than I, maybe, at this point. Uh, with the Dodgers, he was a reliever. And then he went to the American yeah. League. So I, I just Chicago. don't think I ever faced, Never faced Charlie. him at all. Huh? I might have faced him at Albuquerque when I was coming up through Triple A, but I don't think I faced him. I did watch old Charlie pitch opening day, though, down at Joe Robbie Stadium. That was quite a thrill, to be honest with you. Yeah, did you sit in the stands and watch an opening day? It was. Uh, the, the, uh, the atmosphere at Joe Robbie Stadium, the opening day, uh, you know, I had my kids there. My kids now go to school in, in Florida, and uh, the community, the, the Florida, the, it was a happening in the state of Florida. Baseball, the first official game of baseball in Florida. It was like something that they'll never be able to take away from my kids. They were there. They have a hat. They have a scorecard. They have their tickets. They have all those things in a little uh, on their shelves in their bedrooms at home. Three balls and one strike to Morandini, and they beat Tommy Lasorda in the Dodgers. That's right. <laughs> they did. <laughs> Which Tommy wasn't real happy about. No. Guess who was behind the plate? Frank Pulley. He was. I right saw there it. He was. <laughs> first pitch of the game. First hitter in the oh, game. Oh, yeah, yeah. Call him out the pitch with the foot boom. outside. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Strike three. You're yeah. gone. And, and <laughs> three knuckleball. And I guarantee you, they would. I know that all three of them weren't strikes. I know they weren't. They weren't. I was watching. First pitch of the TV. first pitch of the batter in Florida. Boom. <laughs> strike. Well, Thompson was going to go, and they almost got him on that play. You never see wow. work where they fake the third and come back to first. He was running because he saw that Armstrong lifted his foot Whoa. to go. He thought he was going home. Then he had to regroup and get back. And look at him laugh. He says, yep, you almost got me. Almost got me on that play that everybody says. Yep. Oh, he just goes to show you. <laughs> yeah. Three balls that only works turn. once. There he goes. Morandini hits it to left. This should be able to score Eisenreich. Conine grabs it. It's going to be comes. tight. And he scores. Tim Eisenreich, a good base runner, tagged up, scores. Phillies lead it 2-1, to one, sacrifice fly by Mickey Morandini. Right, the key to this decision here is Larry Boa has to make a snap decision. He's got to know the outfielder's arm. The throw, Conine has a better than average arm, and he was a little bit more uh, deeper in the corner than most people would like to see the left-hander on that throw, but Boa had hesitated not one bit, sent his runner, the Phillies take the lead. See that sign, Phillies real in sinking Marlins, a little nautical term. Yes. <laughs> Mulholland, the battery, has not had a good year at home play. Two for 35 with 16 strikeouts. But he certainly has been pitching well, and he has the lead again now, two to one. 
Phillies move some runners in this inning. The fly ball to right, the fly ball to left, and they get a run. And there is a line drive left. Conine plays it on one hop, and Mulholland has his third hit of the year. Jay, let's back up a second here now. Let's go back to that last play, the fly ball that scored the runner from third. Uh, how about Milt Thompson seeing that was a routine fly ball to left and going back and tagging up. The throw to the plate moves Milt Thompson from first to second. He scores on the Mulholland single. You could do that, but the only thing you got to worry about is if he drops the ball. So where are you going to be if he drops the ball? You still can make second. You're tagging, right? Kicks it around a little bit out there. He could. I think... Uh, I think Terry Mulholland has been calling Billy DeMars a little bit, working on his hitting. A lot of Billy in spring training. I think they were kind of in the give up mode there. Let's get Mulholland out of the way and go yeah. get him and start off Dykstra. That's what happens. And all of a sudden he's on with a base hit. Yeah, I'm sure they were thinking they needed to get it done with Morandini. On the other hand, this looks pretty inviting right here. Dykstra against uh, Armstrong with two men on. Home run to lead off the ball game for Lenny. Lenny now at 283. Leading the league in runs with 60. After getting off to a slow start. Well, Holland on at first base. He is a good base runner. Mill Thompson at second, two outs. Look at Dykstra, 14 straight games he scored a run. On deck is Duncan. You know something I haven't seen. I just just dawned on me. What's that? <laughs> we had the All-Star voting yet? Yeah. Yeah, they're doing it. They they hand out the ballots and they see they're handing out the ballots down there. They hand them okay. out the second inning. I haven't even heard anything about All-Star voting. Aaron Dalton point. way ahead. Really? Okay. Dykes shoots fourth among outfielders. Crock is second to Will Clark at first right now. Foul away. Well, these guys need to at least put uh, Dykstra and Dalton in that starting starting lineup. There it is. There's your all-star ballot, Michael. The Phillies might send three or four guys. Well, yeah, Cruck, you know. Cruck's going to go. Then you got the two pitchers, Green and Schilling. Yeah. Two balls, two strikes now. Trouble. That is going to be trouble. Phillies will have him loaded. Dykstra with an infield hit. And here comes Duncan with the bases loaded and two outs. Anytime you hit a ball off the end of the bat and you got speed like Dykstra has, you got an easy single. You can see the pitch was a breaking ball. They really pulled the string on it. Armstrong tried to wait a little bit, then jump. Walt, while <laughs> I'm watching Walt, he looked one way, then the other. Weiss had no play whatsoever. He tried to see if Thompson was going to take a wide turn. The Phillies load him up with a two to one lead here in the bottom of the second. Makes me think of that play you used to make, Michael, when you think yeah. that throw to first, trying to get that guy coming around second. <laughs> well, that would have been a pretty, pretty tricky move there to be able to 360 and go yeah. back to second uh, with the fear of uh, throwing one into center field <laughs> and coming around third. Just a little bit. However, uh, however, if you warn the shortstop, that might happen before the play. You never know. <laughs> you got a few. <laughs> I love the reaction too after what happened. Oh man, how did that happen? See if the Phillies can cash in on this now. They have them loaded. They have a run in, lead two to one. One ball, no strikes on Duncan. Way outside. He missed badly on the first two, two and zero. Oh. And here comes Marcel Latchman, brother of the manager, coming out to the mound. Marcel, the pitching coach. Jonathan. Jack Armstrong in his last outing, as we mentioned, he only struck out one in that game. He walked four. And he's lost three in a row and four out of his last five in perspiring on this hot, humid night. They carry a 12-man pitching staff in the Florida Marlins, and they're starting to scurry around in the bullpen a little bit. They got three innings out of Chris Carpenter in the pen last night, so he's probably not available. Richie Lewis is going to get up. Right-hander, former Florida State University pitcher. 2-0 to Duncan. 
chased a bad ball two and one. Phillies have hit four of them in 93. One by Mariano Duncan. That one off Lee Arthur Smith that won a game for the Phillies late. That is dramatic. A home run as the Phillies have hit all year. Three and one. You had a few dramatic ones off Lee Arthur Smith, Michael. Yeah, I'll tell you, blind squirrel find, finds an acorn every now and then, right? That, that was a tough bad bat at Lee Arthur Smith. How about in the twilight at Wrigley? He can make a few guys look bad there. Well, you ought to be right-handed, Jay. <laughs> That's right. I saw him throw a curveball to a right-hand batter, and the batter sat down and broke back over for strike three. Swaying at a miss. Duncan had a high fastball and swung through it, so he's run out the string. 50 pitches now for Jack Armstrong. Everybody will be off and running. Bases loaded, two outs, and a 3-2 count. Boy, now it's when you really got to sit there at home. Oh, it's 3-2, excuse me. And now you got to make contact. Your Mariano, short enough, give in to that pitcher and put that ball in play. Playing him slightly to pull in the outfield. Here we go. Line drive. Yes, the glove yes, walk yes. twice, and the Phillies will get two out of it. Mulholland scores behind Thompson, and they lead it four to one. Walt Weiss almost made a spectacular play. You're so right. You can see Duncan setting himself. See him wiggle that bat, then get the hands back up, shoulder high. The pitch was a fastball right at the belt. Duncan belted it. Weiss made a diving leap for it. Just went off the tip of his glove. Weiss, uh, outstanding shortstop, a little discouraged with himself. He thought he should have had that ball, but I'll tell you what, if he'd have caught that one, he could have hung a star in that, because that had been the best play I've seen in a while. Chris Crook struck out on a curveball his first time up. Runners at the corners now, three runs in. With two outs. Mike, that's one of the reasons why the Phillies have done so well this year is the fact that they've been able to pick each other up here with two outs. Duncan comes through with a big two-out single. And each day, it seems like it's somebody new on the Phillies picking each other yeah. up. And with nothing more important to a ball club success than two-out hits, right, mm. Reels? Oh, my. And this remember, team remember does a lot of that. Remember those Greg Luzinski two-out uh, singles with men on second? That's how you win championships. Good last one. He's always writing in a dugout. He's always taking notes. Up high. Three balls and no strikes to Kruk. He's patient once again, leading the league in walks. Dalton on deck. Speaking of the manager, there he is, Renee Latchman. I think you got uh, two pretty good candidates for manager of the year in these two dugouts right now. <laughs> yeah. There's Lewis still continuing to throw. Let's see what Kruk does. 3-0. Five. Base hit left field. Dykstra scores. Phillies have another one on the board and lead it five to one here in the second inning on an RBI by Crook. Jay, 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 I'll let you talk about this one. Man Crook can, is so uh, patient. A man can take a three and zero fastball and hit it the other way. It's yeah. beyond me. <laughs> guy is so patient. He wasted the last minute. He's got the most unorthodox batting stance you'll ever want to see. And then he takes that pitch and lines it down the left field line like a bullet. I've never seen a 3 0 pitch hit the other way. <laughs> <laughs> and hit well. Right. Maybe Latchman agrees because he's going to make a pitching change. Here comes the right hander, Richie Lewis, into the ball game. And Jack Armstrong is gone after an inning and two thirds. And there's the line on him, and the responsibility remains for him with the two men that are still on base. Hey guys, listen. I've done all I can do for you this inning. I'm I'm out of right here. I got I got to go talk. Just because you got four runs for us, you have to leave. Hey, th thanks a lot. Hey, good luck with the golf. Thanks, thanks Will. Okay, appreciate Mike. the time. Thanks on for coming Jay. by. Hi, Mike. Hey, Larry. And there's Jack Armstrong, a little dejected right now. Made some good pitches. Phillies capitalized on a couple of mistakes he made, and right now he sits and looks at the scoreboard. He's down by a four, and we're only in the bottom of the second. Goes Latchman heading back. Latchman's had good pitching this year. Unlike Don Baylor, who's making all kinds of trips to the mound all the time to change pitchers, he's had pretty good, pretty good pitching so far. But he brings in the right-hander Richie Lewis, and we'll be back with more right after these messages. This is twenty thousand dollars. This is also twenty thousand dollars. You'd take care of this, wouldn't you? You should take care of your car just as carefully. Bring it to Jiffy Lube, the only place with the experience of servicing 68 million cars. 
Considering that your car is worth thousands of dollars, experience counts. We got experience that you can lose. Upon completing the rear axle assembly diagrams, using a 9 inch gripping wrench, tighten the C diagrams and secure the frame extenders to the housing mount. Congratulations, you built a tricycle. While the simplest things can be made complex, the challenge is making the complex simple. And that's what we do at Bell Atlantic Mobile. With straight answers, clear explanations, and with no assembly required. Bell Atlantic Mobile. Advanced technology and people who make it mean something. Well, the homestand continues, but what does this feel funny to say? If you don't have tickets and you don't have them holding them for you tomorrow, don't even come out here. The game's sold out. This game is sold out tomorrow afternoon, so forget it. But if you're coming out, we'll see you tomorrow. That's right. And then the Braves are here Monday and Tuesday nights at 735 in the business person special number two coming up on Wednesday afternoon. For your tickets, call 463 1000 a sellout here tomorrow. Yeah, and we can always can... hang around outside and uh, listen to Harry and you and Richie. Right there, Jay. Tell people what to do if they have their tickets. Well, if any fan who's already purchased his tickets on hold may pick them up any time after 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. Persons who have not already ordered tickets, this game has been sold out as Dalton fouls this one off. So, one of the few Philly sellouts, but we're glad to see it, and the Phillies are glad to see it, and it's good for baseball. So, that's that. Wait till the next time. Richie Lewis in the ball game last night pitched one third of an inning. He is five foot ten, 175 pound right hander out of Muncie, Indiana. Motion Florida State University pitcher. Was 14 and two as a sophomore for the Seminoles. 202 strikeouts in 128 innings. Second round pick of Montreal in 1987. Had a lot of arm trouble over the years. Wound up in the Baltimore organization, and and that's where Florida got him from in the expansion draft. He's got a fastball, curveball, slider, and change. Mixes the ball up a little bit. Likes to challenge people with that fastball. And every now and then he'll sink it or turn it over. A lot of people think Chris his curveball is his best pitch, but uh, I guess we'll just have to see. Dalton uh, is 0 for 1 tonight with a ground out. Bills with two on, and the pitch is outside. They have batted around now in the inning. It started with Eisenreich single. Caught Mike Schmidt in here, and he got four runs. Yeah. And now he gave us Tony back, and <laughs> oh well. One and two to Dalton. Here's the pitch. Hit the deep center, but Chuck Carr is right there. Now have to come in as that ball really sunk on him. And the center fielder makes a good play, but the Phillies have a big inning. Four runs. Five hits. No errors and two left. Phillies lead five to one after two. Where to find the mountain man? A mountain man can often be found on the trail of adventure in search of remote watering holes or weathering harsh climates. Most often, however, you'll find the mountain man wherever you find smooth bush beer or easy drinking bush light. So, head for the mountains and find yourself in the wide open world of the mountain man. Okay, panel, how can you recognize the genuine yellow pages? Uh, it has a yellow cover. Good. It says a bell of Pennsylvania on the front? Right. Uh, it has more choices inside. Yes! That's how you tell the genuine article from mere images. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, thank you. you. The genuine Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. Nine out of ten use it. No other book can match it. A Bell Atlantic Company. It's out there. Tonight's winning daily number is out there. So what are you waiting for? Get out there and play it. The Pennsylvania Lottery's daily number. Don't forget to play every day. It's a big league looking batting helmet. Free for kids 14 and under when the Phillies play the Padres. Sunday, July 4th at 8.05. 
Celebrate July 4th at a Phillies game and get a batting helmet free. Call 463-1000. Well, uh, as we mentioned, you can't come to the ball game tomorrow unless you have tickets, but you can watch on PHL 17 at 1.30. Then Sports Channel Philadelphia will have the game for you on Monday night. We're going to keep Kent Tacovey around. He played in the game tonight. He'll work with Andy Muss. And then Tuesday night back on PHL 17. Looking ahead to Wednesday, we're going to have that one for you on Prism, the business person special. That's going to be fun. Here's Rich Renteria, who grounded out his first time up. Hit it to Morandini. He's 0 for 1. So Mulholland all of a sudden had the game tied, and now he's ahead by four. Just like that, leads it 5 to 1. We're in the third. Pitches inside. It's Renteria Conine Destrade. Three guys will bat from the right side against Mulholland. Facing an all right handed hitting lineup tonight. Fouled off the foot of Ed Montague, the home plate umpire. Those extra four runs kind of give Terry a little bit of breathing room now. Now he doesn't have to be worried about making that perfect pitch. He can go with that slider he throws so well. You know, keeping it down and into the right hand is maybe just out of the strike zone. Oh, nice play by Batiste. Jumps up, throws. Terrific play, Kim Batiste. Looked like that play Schmidt was trying to make the, <laughs> make the start that game. Except, except Batiste caught the ball on this one. You know, uh, nothing makes a pitcher smile any bigger than a great defensive play by his infielders and you can see Batiste right there ball rifle down the line of third base and Batiste backhands it slides around comes up and makes a nice throw to front. Jeff Conine who walked in the first inning Terry Mulholland will be Larry Rosen's guest on Philly's profile after this half inning he'll talk about how much he likes to finish what he starts. He pitched eight and a third the other night now we're getting a little shower here at Veterans Stadium as the umbrellas are starting to go up. Some fans are heading for cover. You hear that murmur in the stands? I wondered what it was. And it's umbrellas. <laughs> Not an official game. We are only in the third inning. There are some showers in the area. On this hot, humid evening at Veterans Stadium, we're getting a little rain. Tip held on to by Dalton. It's two and two. Full nine set uh, set a record or tied a record actually. As the, the second expansion player ever to get four hits on opening day. Of course, the other being the Seattle manager now, Lou Pinella. But that's quite an accomplishment. Your opening day with a new expansion franchise. You go four for four. Yeah, that was the game Mike was talking about. Mm -hmm. That he was there with his kids. Grounded to Morandini. Quickly throws him out. Two up and two down in the third. Happy birthday tonight to Howard Cat and also to Mike West and Allison West as the grandchildren of Catherine and Jack Scott of Woodbury, New Jersey and Betty and Ken West of Franconia, PA Jack, the guy who's in charge of the South Jersey baseball old timers, a great group of baseball fans over in the Woodbury area and Jersey area. Orestes Destrade, the batter, he grounded out his first time up. Hit to deep left field, a towering shot, and that ball is gone. A home run for Destrade, his sixth home run of the year. Now it's a 5-2 to two game in favor of the Phillies. Now that kind of reminded me more like Mike Schmidt with that swing. Destrade really unloads on this. Watch where the pitch is. It's a fastball right at the knees, caught most of the plate. And Destrade with a big swing, got the hands and the arms out and just unloaded. Thompson going back didn't even bother to fall. You can see how high it is now deep and went back into the lower level. Did you ever like a pitch better than one down and in? Oh boy, <laughs> like that. you got home run power like that. Uh, if you folks don't recall, Destroy led the Japanese league three years in a row with home runs. And it was a solo home run. Santiago to Batiste throws him out. That'll do it for Florida in the third inning. A run on a hit. The home run by Destrade. No errors and nobody left. Phils lead it five to two. And now it's time for Phillies profile as Larry Rosen visits with the nationally complete team leader. Right there, that guy. Heading for the dugout. Terry Mulholland.
To be called a horse is one of the top compliments a pitcher can hear. And Terry Mulholland has certainly earned that distinction. Mulholland is a consummate professional. And in the baseball world of specialization, he still believes the starting pitcher has a nine-inning job. But as the innings mount, does Terry believe a little late-game respite would be a long-term benefit? Oh, I, I'm not worried about, you know, saving, saving myself. I mean, I, that's what I work hard in the offseason for is to, to be out there as much as I can and, and to do the job that I'm paid for. I, you know, I don't think there's a guy out here that when he goes out on the mound, you know, believes that he should only be out there for four or five innings. You know, I, I take the ball and I go out the first inning and I want to be out there in the ninth inning. And that's usually the most exciting inning anyways. It's a lot more fun to to be, uh, be out there on the field when all that action is going on. Well, the fireworks are coming up here at Veterans Day. We had a few of them already in this ball game, but the aerial fireworks display two of them on Friday, July 2nd, after the 29 doubleheader at 435, and then on Saturday, July 3rd, after the game at 705, the San Diego Padres will be in town. As always, two spectacular fireworks show by Jerome. Gigantic aerial displays put the music following the game compliments of Mellon PSFS. So there should be some big crowds that night. Hope to see you out here. Here is Richie Lewis. You see a light rain falling. A few umbrellas have sprouted up. Some people headed for the stands. Just gonna go get a hot dog, that's all. Get a hot dog and a coke and wait out the raindrops. Soft pretzel, wait out the raindrops and get back and watch this exciting game. John Vukovic looking on in the Phillies dugout. Another good smile on Vukovic, huh? <laughs> Man has no teeth, folks. He'd have a tough time with that chewing tobacco <laughs> band in the minors, wouldn't he? Has no teeth. He never smiles. You never see his teeth. We love him, though. Jim Eisenreich leads it off here in the third inning. Eisenreich got it started for the Phillies in the second. Singled and scored a run. He now has a nine-game inning streak, and you see the numbers during that streak. Also made a fine defensive play in right tonight. Richie Lewis on in relief of Jack Armstrong, who went an inning and two-third, charged with five earned runs on six hits. Lewis came on and retired Dalton to end the second inning with a couple men on base. Eisenreich, a shot speared by Destrade, one away. Lewis tried to come inside. Eisenreich jumped all over it like it was a big cherry soda. But right at Destrada, you can see he tried to tie him up inside. But Eisenreich, with a very quick bat, really hit a bullet. But Destrade, very big, 6-5, and was able to easily pull it in. Bill Thompson, the batter, one for one with a run scored. I'd like to welcome the borough of Hanburg. They're celebrating their 17th year of bringing a large group to the Phillies game here at the Vet, sponsored by the Rotary Club of Hamburg. Been chaired by Jim Gilmartin since its inception. Domer Leipensberger as co chair of the event for the past several years. I've spoken to that group a few times. Good people up there. And Prism is carried in northern Berks County by Hamburg TV cable. So I'm sure there are a lot of people who are watching up in the area tonight. A lot of them are down here at the game. 600 of them, in fact. Milk Thompson pops it up, third base side for Arias. Had a little trouble with it, but caught it two down. First of all, he had to look up into the raindrops. Arias trying to follow it. You can see as the ball now starts to tail away from him towards his shortstop position. And he just kind of goes right with it and catches it on the heel of the pocket. Well, that's a, that's a play where it could hit you right on the bottom of the hand and pop out. Yeah, that's not the place to catch a no, high pop. No, no, no. Montreal won Atlanta won there in the third. Steve Avery pitching that game tonight. By the way, we have the Atlanta pitchers who will be here. But a lot of people like to know who's pitching for that ball club when they come to town. This the ball bounces up there to Baptiste on Monday night. Greg Maddox against Kurt Schilling on Tuesday. Pete Smith and Danny Jackson. And in the business person special that we'll have for you on Prism, John Smoltz and Ben Rivera. Rivera, the former Atlanta Brave. Oh, and the losing pitcher just graced our presence, Kent Tacalvi. Way to go, Kent. He got a few balls up at the right time, didn't he? <laughs> Get that one over with. We didn't want to go extra innings. No. Batty swings and misses at a breaking ball. And it's good to see that the uh, the 83 Phillies bounce back like that down by a run and got a couple of key hits and ended up scoring the winning run. You know, that's the fun part about it. A light rain continuing to fall here at the vet. 
One ball and one strike to Kim Baptiste. Serves it into center field for a base hit. Richie Lewis really got in on his hands, and Baptiste fought it off for a base hit his first in the ball game. Oh, I'll take about a hundred of those during the year. Watch the swing. You can see how he has to really bring his hands in close to his body. The ball running in at his belt. Tried to really jam him. Baptiste brought the bat and the hands in close to his body. It still jammed him, but he was able to flare it over the shortstop Weiss's head. Like I said, it's a it's a base hit and knock in the scorebook tomorrow. Looks like a line drive. Morandini got a sacrifice fly his first time up. Mickey's 14th run bat at the end of the year. That made it two to one Phillies at the time. The Phillies then added three more. And they now lead it by a score of five to two. They batted around, scored four runs in the second. Richie Lewis misses outside. Lewis has not allowed an earned run in 14 of his 19 appearances, eight out of his last 10 as Baptiste takes his lead off first. So he's been doing a good job out of the bullpen for Rene Latchman. Foul out of play, left side, one and one. Have you looked at this crowd lately, Chris? I mean, we've got people all the way up in the yellow seats around the stadium. They expected in the high 40s to near really? 50 for this game tonight. I was going to say, I bet we got close to 45,000 yep. people out here tonight. That's what they were looking for. Wow, oh, that's great. And the sellout tomorrow, good advances for the Atlanta games, but those there are tickets remaining for all three Atlanta games, so come on out. We'll see you Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Low and in the dirt. And if you're just tied up and you can't get out here Wednesday, folks, just tune us in on prison. Chris and I will be bringing you the game along with Gary Maddox, 1235 business person special. So sneak home for lunch, put on the old tube, sit back, grab yourself a sandwich and a glass of milk, and listen to us. Strike two call. Kim Batiste on at first base with two outs. Orandini swings and misses a good breaking one, but he just froze for some reason. That's the third out of the inning. And that'll do it. In the third, no runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. Through two and a half. Bills lead it. What does it take to be a mountain man, man? Do you need a big horse? Do you need a deep tan? Do you have to have a saddle? Do you have to have a gear? Well, the simple truth is you just gotta have the beer. Bush beer, an easy drinking bush light. Have you got what it takes to be a mountain man? What does it take to live a mountain man's life? Get smooth bush beer is a drinking bush light. I can get in 72 hours. I wouldn't trust my car past the city limits. For the way you travel today more than ever, the smart money is on budget. Plan a great getaway by giving budget a call. You'll get great rates on great cars. The smart money is on budget. group of 25 or more, we'll give you a great time at a Phillies game. For all the details about a special package for your group at a Phillies game, call 463-5000. Hi, Chris. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium. Chris Wheeler, Gary Maddox, Georgia. Did you have fun that game tonight? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I know you don't I like them. I went out there. I played uh, defense for uh, an inning. Just couldn't cover the ground. You know, I used to be able to make it out there without stopping just to get to the outfield so far now I just have to uh, do it in, in stops I go to first base I stop make it to second base did you get an AB tonight yeah because I didn't see it got a base hit that away who'd you hit it off 
I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Who was pitching? I don't know. We were, we were doing interviews down there. I don't remember. Oh, no, that's right. I didn't get up. I, said, I didn't think I saw you hit. <laughs> In fact, I asked your sons if you hit, and they said no. Up the middle and through for a base hit by Junior Felix. I mean, right off, uh, aren't they making a lot of good contact off of Terry Mulholland tonight? Well, this game has been a struggle. I mean, the Phillies are ahead 5-2, to two, and it's only the fourth inning. I mean, but they've hit some balls hard. Back up the middle, down the third base in particular. I mean, and Terry throws a lot of off-speed pitches, but I think they've been hitting the ball exceptionally hard off of. This is where you'll see a veteran, though, who has the ability to go out there and get the job done, uh, regardless of whether or not he has his best stuff. Quick move, and he almost got Felix. And it's starting to rain a little harder now. Not a real heavy rain, but the hardest it's rained so far tonight. Now, how many innings is it before it's final? <laughs> <laughs> Worst an official. Now, game. that's not what it was. <laughs> well, in this case, it would be four and a half. Okay. Lewis is due to bat fourth in this inning, and they're going to get look like Corsi up. Strike call. Lewis has done a good job since he came into the game. There you see the trade for Alex Arias coming over here. He was not in the expansion draft. Danny Jackson was another guy that they selected and then traded. As was Hibbert. Cubs are just so well stocked at shortstop they could afford to give up an Arias. Junior Felix, a leadoff base runner. One ball and two strikes on Arias with Walt Weiss waiting on deck. Down the line, fair or foul. It is just foul. That would have been a ground rule double. Well, I think last night's ball game for the Phillies was a very important ball game. I mean, not do or die by any means, but it was good for them after having lost three in a row. I mean, St. Louis, there's the how close that ball came to being fair. Pretty close, but still foul. You know, they lost three games in a row right off, and St. Louis had won three, so it got down to eight and a half. And then the Marlins, I mean, the next night, after winning the first game, comes out and takes an early lead. I thought it was very critical for the Phillies to battle back and take that game. They did last night. They had a big inning and scored, uh, what was it, five runs in one inning. They batted around. Five runs in the fifth, batted around. Right tonight, they batted around, scored four runs in a bat around. They've hit Florida with a couple of innings. Good piece of hitting by Arias. And Felix takes a big turn at second and will hold there. So Mulholland is not sharp at this point, and the Marlins are putting the ball in play, and they have two hits in this inning, and they have six overall. See, I think with Terry, you know, maybe not getting the oomph on the pitch, but I think it's primarily having trouble with his location. Got a lot of bad pitches right there. Arias showed he was trying to go the other way, too, with two strikes and did it. Well, Mulholland, what well, he dictates where you hit the ball normally. He'll dictate that, but he's throwing it right down the middle, and the hitters are hitting it all over the place. He likes to jam you inside with the fastball or slider. He likes to keep you off balance and make you hit it away sometimes. There's a base hit as that ball was up. Thompson will get it back in, and they're going to be loaded with one out. Richie Lewis is in the on-deck circle of pitcher, but they'll bring him back. Bases loaded and nobody out on three singles here in the fourth inning. They're scrambling down in the Phillies bullpen, and I don't think it's to uh, get out of the rain either. Johnny Padres is on the way to the mound. And Geronimo Barroa is going to come out and bat for Lewis. It's so hard to say what Terry Mulholland is thinking or feeling, but I, you know, I know from experience. There's some nights you, you come down that tunnel leading up to the to the clubhouse. It's at about three o'clock in the afternoon, and you don't see how you're gonna get yourself ready for that game. You just don't feel up to it, or or whatever. Just some nights you don't bring it. And the rain's starting to fall a lot harder as Jose De Leon starts to loosen up for the Phillies, and 
Barroa comes off the bench to bat for Richie Lewis. Barroa batting at 133, 0 for 4 as a pinch hitter. He pinch hit in the game last night. In the, out of the Cincinnati Reds organization originally. Bases loaded. Nobody out. It's a 5 to 2 game in favor of the Phillies. Phillies will play the infield and double play that. They gladly give up a run to get two. They got a shot at it. You can go home to first. They get a double play and don't give up anything. That's even better. Boy, that was a seed hit right at Kim Batiste. He made a good play. The Phillies were ever. That's a very unusual double play there. Boy. You know, and, and Batiste made the right decision, Gary, because he's got to throw across his body, a tough double play around the horn. He comes straight home with it. Good you know, and, and a player never really, if you're thinking about your option as an infielder and turning two, that's not what you think of. You think of going to second and then on the first to turn the double play. But So that was an instant decision on his part, knowing once he got it that, hey, we got a chance to turn it the long way. Excellent decision by Kim Batiste. And the runners now at second and third with two outs for Chuck Carr. And as Gary said, that ball was hit right on the nose on this wet AstroTurf. Well, how they're swinging a lot of first pitches at him, too. Well, you know, you go around the league and everyone knows he's first ball striking. He's, he's one of those guys that starts you off with the first ball strike nine times out of ten. Even knowing that when he has this good stuff, that's not to any advantage because he's going to spot it in a certain place to make you uh, make you hit it. And he is throwing strikes tonight, as you see by that. Through that breaking ball in the dirt. All different kinds play. of strikes now. That ball's hit right on the nose and right at Baptiste. So the Phillies get out of that inning after the Marlins hit two rockets at the third baseman. No runs, three hits, no errors, and two left. Still 5-2, Phils. Any professional painter will tell you that if you want results like these, you gotta know the tricks of the trade. You gotta ask Sherwin-Williams. Now, these are guys you can trust. They've got good paint, good price, good advice, guaranteed. Wanna know something? I didn't paint this house. The guy that lives there did. Hey, fella, nice job. This guy knows what the pros know. Ask Sherwin Williams. Upon completing the rear axle of C diagrams, using a 9 inch gripping wrench, tighten the C diagrams and secure the frame extenders to the housing mount. Congratulations, you built a tricycle. While the simplest things can be made complex, the challenge is making the complex simple. But that's what we do at Bell Atlantic Mobile with straight answers, clear explanations, and with no assembly required. Bell Atlantic Mobile. Advanced technology and people who make it mean something. If you want the number one selling sport utility truck in America, and you want the most passenger and cargo room, then see your Quality Plus Ford dealer now during Ford Truck Month. Save on all Ford Explorers. Explorer has six passenger seating and on-the-fly push-button 4x4 touch drive. Jeep Grand Cherokee doesn't. Save $1,900 on Explorer. Hurry, Ford Truck Month. And soon. See your Quality Plus Ford dealer today. You better hit the ground running in a new Ford truck. Out there on defense in the last inning. This was a double play that got Terry Mulholland out of a jam. It's a line drive right at Batiste. Knows he has time, comes home. They get one, Dalton, a strike to first base, and they turn two the long way. Then if things couldn't get any better for Terry, throws up another line drive, and there's Batiste right there. Look how close he's in playing because of the speed of the runner and a nice place. Play, playing good over there. What I like about Batiste, and some guys have these. Larry Ball was like that. The ability to throw that ball to first base from any position and throw it a strike across there. Good arm, good accuracy with that hose. You know, he seems to me more comfortable playing third than shortstop. It's a new position to him. Well, here's Jim Corsi, the right-hander. See his stats. Corsi is a six-foot-one, 220-pounder, three-plus years in the major leagues. Now, 31 years of age, has seen service in the big leagues with Oakland and Houston. Native of Newton, Massachusetts. Of 
Percy against the Phillies has been in five career games, one of them with the Marlins, four of them with the Astros. Has no record of 3.86 earned run average. He was on the DL for a while this year. Of course, he a fastball slider type pitcher, tries to sink it. Billy saw him when he was with the Astros back in 1991. He was 0-5 with Houston that year in 47 games with a 3.71 earned run average. Terry Mulholland will lead it off. He's one for one with a run scored in the top of the order, Dykstra and Duncan. Mulholland kept it going for the Phillies in that big inning. Yeah, that was part of uh, Armstrong's down. Giving up to a hit to Mulholland, just his third of the year in 36 at bats. Terry swings and misses and goes to one knee. He always wince a little bit when he does that because he does not have good knees, but he seems to be okay. It's just bad form on that swing. <laughs> Your weight wasn't distributed properly. You just say, get up now. No balls and two strikes on Mulholland. The rain continuing to fall here in the fourth inning. This game is not yet official. One ball and two strikes. Okay. Well, that's what happens when you get that uh, that base hit. Of course, he finishes him off with a breaking ball this time. He's going to try hitting this yacker. Of course, he's watching that from the bullpen. <laughs> well, Santiago probably had a lot to do with it. Terry Mulholland doesn't see a whole lot of breaking balls. Usually throw him fastballs. Dykstra on a perfect night tonight. Lead off home run. Infield hit. He scored two runs. Average up to 285. Dykstra leading the league in runs coming into the game tonight. He now has 61 of them. There's the rain coming down as Walt Weiss peers in from his shortstop position. Down the line and left, and it will slice into the stands. You know, the players aren't complaining about that rain out there. Because you were down there doing the game a little earlier. I mean, that it was hot. Ooh, it was smoking in that dugout. Humidity. <laughs> the rain feels good in this case. There's Conai in the left fielder blinking. Yeah, it could, it could be a little trouble maybe on a pop-up or something, but I'm just talking about for freshening up. Yeah, the rain this time of the year doesn't feel all that bad. You don't like it when it's raining on you in April up here. No balls and two strikes on Dykstra. Of course, he goes behind the mound and tries to knock a little of that clay out of his cleats. Fouled into the Phillies' first base dugout. Five runs, seven hits, no errors for the Phillies. Two runs, seven hits, no errors for Florida here in the fourth. been hot for a while and he's been doing a lot of just that you know pitchers pitches fouling him off giving himself another shot All right he got an infield single little check check swing back over the pitcher's head he, I think they're starting to even out for him he had some buzzards luck early on uh, in the year he's starting to get his hits now a couple of chinks here and a line drive there long ball the ball players ever believe that that stuff evens out oh no no <laughs> you hear fans say well you know that evens it out and I, you know no, you never really, as a player, you never feel it evens out. You always feel they owe you. When you get a chinker, you say, huh, they owed me that. I had that one coming. Yeah. Huh? Chinkers, what you call, you know, the ones you just barely hit off the end of the bat or just over the, the second baseman's head that just barely gets to the outfield for a base hit. The one Kim Baptiste had earlier in the game. We are in the fourth inning as the rains continue to fall here at the vet. We have had no rain delays as of yet and hopefully won't. One ball, two strikes to Dykstra. And of course, he steps off. 
relief pitcher working from the stretch at all times as many relievers do nowadays. Plenty in the left center field. That's a base hit and it's going to scoop. Carr makes a good play to his right and cuts it off. And Lenny Dykstra is 3 4 3 and is at a season high 288. In my opinion, where Lenny Dykstra hit that ball is where you're supposed to be playing him. I mean, he's a guy that, especially behind in the count, will hit the ball the other way. Now, if he's ahead in the count, he's going to try and sit on something and juice it, so you may move your right fielder around. But for the most part, you got to play Lenny Dykstra right where that ball lands right there. Would you not play him quite as far over on a breaking ball? Well, that's what you have to have understood with your pitcher. And, you know, the catcher sitting out there will know, well, if I got my guy sitting over here, I'm not going to be throwing him a breaking ball in this situation. You try and pitch to a certain area, and you defend that area you're trying to pitch to. Pretty hard. It's the old stall right there. You know, when you're the other team and you're losing, you start saying, somebody's going to get hurt. <laughs> you know, the ball slipping and everything. Somebody's going to get hurt out here. And the umpire, if he agrees with you, will call time. The count is 1 0 to Duncan. There's one out, and Nunny Dykstra on at first base. Jim Corsi, the third pitcher already used by Florida, and we're only in the fourth inning. Armstrong, an inning in two thirds, one and a third for Lewis. How do you think Armstrong would feel to have this game rained out? <laughs> huh? He wouldn't mind those stats disappearing. I don't think so. To Renteria, the distraught, will call him safe. Close play, and Duncan beat it, so there are two outs. I'll tell you, at first look, it looked like he was out there. Estrada maybe stayed on the bag a little too long and didn't cheat enough, but see right here on this, I think it happened. Here's another angle. Yeah, they, they got him. I mean, they tell me that the first base umpire doesn't really look at the play. He listens for when the guy hits the bag with his foot and when the glove hits the the hand of the first baseman. I think he got him confused. He, <laughs> he was listening on a one second delay then. So. Or he listened to hear the wrong sound. <laughs> Crack the batter, one for two with an RBI single. He's also struck out both of his at bats coming off the starter Armstrong. the crew chief looking up at the sky at third. They want to make this game at least official. I know the Phillies do because they're ahead in the game. And there's Bruce. And they also have a huge crowd in attendance tonight. Crack very patient once again. In his brief career against the Florida Marlins, or in their brief career, Crack has lit them up pretty good so far. That's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to light up Colorado and Florida. You're supposed to get your wins off of them. You're supposed to get your hits off of them. They're an expansion team. They're a little bit on a lower level than the rest of the league. Uh, though looking at Florida's record and the teams they're, they're in front of, you may not think that. Well, the Marlins at 31 and 34 coming into the game tonight. The best record for a first year expansion team after 65 games. So they have done very well early on. They come into play tonight in fifth place, 15 games out of first. It doesn't matter what they are out of first, but nobody expects them to win anything. In fifth place, that's significant. Well, I, I think it's significant, but also if your team uh, is picking up those winning habits and learning to win, they want to win this ball game. If the team's 25 games out, if it's raining, you don't care, whatever, let's just get them over. In fact, you don't mind it being called after five innings. Whoops, that ball just popped out of Santiago's glove. That's a pass ball on Benito. And Duncan moves down to second. That's a lack of concentration on Santiago's part. Can't blame the rain on it. Look at that right there. Doesn't even get his glove. Doesn't get the pocket open. Look at that glove right there. Look at our first baseman's glove, doesn't it? Oh, a lot of the catchers are using those kind of gloves. You could pick up one of Darren Dalton's and. Uh, you know, they're really flexible. That's one of the reasons. Johnny Bench really revolutionized catching, I guess. He started catching with one hand, making that one hand tag like a fielder. I, 
I mean, but if you look at a second baseman, the shortstop, their gloves are small because they have to get in and out of there quite quickly. And I think, if anything, you have a tendency to lose the ball in a big glove. So, unless you're catching a knuckleball or something like that, it seemed like you'd be at a disadvantage. And Kruk walks. And Darren Dalton coming up. And Darren Dalton tied with Matt Williams for the league lead and runs batted in. Barry Bonds right there along with Colorado is having a heck of a year. Colorado, of course, has to represent Colorado in, their, in the All-Star game this year. I think so. It's good to see him come back and have a good year after struggling for a couple of years. I know he had to have a lot of self-doubt, you know, the type of years he's had. But to get up there and... He could thank Don Baylor, too, because Baylor helped him last year when he was hitting coach at St. Louis. And then he brought him over to the Colorado Ball Club now that he's manager. I'm sure Baylor could see a little of himself in Colorado. A big, strong guy, kind of a quiet guy. Just goes about his business, not a lot of baloney. Yeah, he's a good team player. Of course, he continued to kick at the mound out there, trying to get comfortable as the rain continues to fall. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning, and it's 5-2 Phillips. Two men on. And two outs. Darren's 0 for 2 in the game. Snap throw to second. He'll still do that once in a while. Yeah, Santiago made that famous. I remember him uh, picking off your, your second inning guest here. You know, I was going to bring that up to him when he was in here, but I thought, why do that to Michael? He's in here and being real nice to us and everything. Why oh, bring that up? I'm going to bother him. Shoot. I, I mean... He did get him a second one. He got it from his knees. Well, Mike, we, now, Mike can't take that after all the, the greatness he has. I mean, he, he could take it, but I figured, why, why bring up a negative to him tonight? I only saw that throw, and it reminded me of it. It's good to see Mike Schmidt. Rip to left center. Back goes Carr, and he's there and makes the play. Dalton hit it right on the nose and run down by Carr. In the inning, no runs. One hit, no errors. The Phils will leave two. May I help you, sir? Yeah, I'll have a Coca-Cola. You sure you want a Coke? Yeah, I want a Coke. <laughs> okay, pal. Oh! Huh? You order a Coke? It, it tastes good. Oh! I didn't care if it was a Coke. You just want a Coke. I'll just, just have a cola. cola. I'll just have a cola. I'll just, just have a Coke. I'll drink, sir. I'll just have a... I'll just have a... I'll just have a Coke. Ooh. Huh. You hear that, guys? A Coca-Cola. <laughs> See ya, pal. Oh! What's new at mobile? Let's take a look. Introducing new mobile Super Plus detergent gasoline. It still cleans fuel injectors and intake valves. Now it helps keep the very heart of your engine cleaner. Down here, the cylinders and pistons. So come down to the Big Red O and drive your engine clean with new mobile Super Plus, the detergent gasoline. Mountain man survival skills. The basics. A true mountain man must have a keen sense of direction, a certain physical dexterity, and a talent for surviving the most unforgiving climates. Of course, nothing is more key to a mountain man's survival than plenty of smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush life. So, head for the mountains. And learn how the mountain man survives even the most grueling conditions. Independence Day night, July the 4th. The Phillies will be here with the Padres in an 8.05 start. A special game time, a special gift for all fans 14 and under. An official looking Phillies batting helmet, red with the Phil's P on the front. Come on out that night. Should be a good night. A rare Sunday night game called 463 1000. Keep those operators busy. We understand they are. Saw that article in the paper this morning in the Philadelphia Inquirer about how hard it is to get a ticket. Yeah, Glenn Mack now had a good story there on the front page at the top of the Inquirer today about Philly's tickets. But don't let that scare everybody off now. There's plenty of tickets for games. There's just certain games are selling better than others. Like tomorrow, there's no tickets tomorrow. Well, you could probably come up with some, though. No, I, I have it on my machine right now. Don't call me for tickets. <laughs> Rich Renteria, the batter, 0 for 2. There's another hard ground ball. Mulholland 
still struggling in this game. He got out of last inning with some balls hit right at people. That's hit number eight now for Florida. And here's Conine. He Kim to the left. Not this time, big guy. I mean, it wasn't hit as hard at the, as the other ones that were hit that way, but just out of his reach. Conine has walked around in the second. Hits are even at eight. Phil's lead at five to two. We're still three outs away from an official game as the rains continue to fall. And Mulholland misses outside. See, again, ball one, and he did it quite a bit last inning. He just, that's not how he pitches. He can throw a strike at any time, make no mistake about it, but he's usually, you know, strike one. He has only walked one, but what he is is wild in the strike zone, is what Gary's talking about. That could be two. It should be two. It will be two. And this is, game is one out away from being official. Slider got it in on him a little bit. Perfect ball for a double play. Perfect pitch. And a good play by Duncan to step on the back, throw it himself. You know, you know what's wet? Why exchange it? Well, what made it a good play with Duncan? You have a tendency when you're going to take it yourself to start running to the bag before you actually get it. He stayed, you know, positioned himself, got the ball cleanly, and then went to the bag. Get that little sidearm throw. That'll get the runner out of the way. Here's Destrada. He hit a moonshot home run his last time up, and he's grounded a short home run for him. Orestes is six. Lenny Dykstra is right there. And this baby is official. In the fifth inning, no runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left. We're heading to the bottom of the fifth. 5 2 Suppose you wanted to make a chair as stable as can be. Where would you put the legs? Right at the corners, right? Now, suppose you wanted to make a car as stable as can be. Where would you put the wheels? Right. That's why the new Intrepid is so remarkably stable. The wheels are pushed out toward the corners. The further we pushed, the more stable and sure-footed it became. Intrepid. This changes everything. You could spend this summer just doing the same old thing again. But really cool families become part of the action at Dorney Park and Wild Water Kingdom. It's where families go to have fun. Go play outside. You could take the kids to meet some pretty weird characters this summer. But really cool families can meet the Berenstain Bears at Dorney Park and Wild Water Kingdom. It's where families go to have fun. Go play outside. Dorney Park and Wild Water Kingdom, nearby in Allentown, PA. Mike's the first guy that ever explained life insurance in a way that we could understand it. Making things clear is the part of my job I like best. He showed us all the options that Nationwide has and even helped us choose. It's training. Uh, seminars and updates, it just never stops at Nationwide. With life insurance, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And we know Mike. Agents like Mike are Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. By Nationwide Insurance, Nationwide is on your side. Your Nationwide agent in Springfield is Elizabeth Harkins. Well, the batting practice mess jersey is coming up. That's on Sunday, July the 11th. Who's in town? Those San Francisco Giants. That should be a good series, a four-game weekend series. This is a brand-new, exciting item for all kids 14 and under. A red mesh jersey. Looks just like the Phillies batting practice jerseys. And this great gift is compliments of Modell Sporting Goods. Terrific day to come on out right before the All-Star break. So head on over to a Ticketmaster outlet or call the Phillies at 463-1000. We'll see you on Sunday, the 11th at 135. There's the line score on the ball game. Totals are even in the hit total, in the error total. But the Phillies up by three at five to two. Big second inning for the Phillies that got them four runs. Uh, since then, they've not been able to touch the Marlins pitching for any runs. Lewis has done a good job. He came in, gave an inning and a third of runless baseball. Corsi in the fourth inning, a couple of base runners, he got out of it. So all five runs have been charged to the starter. The umbrellas were made up as the rains continue to fall, but not hard enough to, for Bruce Fremming to call time. Now that the game is official, we won't see any more delays out there. You know, the, 
The guys are going to say, hey, man, let's hurry up. Pitch, get in there. We don't want them to stop this game now. We want a chance to come back. Once before it's official, I don't care if there's like one pitch to go, they're going to stall and do whatever they can. Jim Eisenreich, one for two tonight. He lined out. The one time he made it out, he singled and scored a run and made a terrific play against the wall in right field early in the game on a smash. He's really good outfielder, Gary. Isn't Very he? good. Uh, seeing him in spring training, a chance to talk to him, just to exchange philosophies. That's what you do when you, you when you see somebody for the first time. And man, he is he's sharp. He's also coachable. Coaches. <laughs> Hope he'll coach. Well, they have, those lines are certainly obliterated. Anybody who wants to put that foot way back, it'd be hard to define it, that's for sure. Owen oh, 2 to Eisenreich, fouls it off left side into the umbrellas. Colorful scene at the bat now with all these umbrellas up. A lot of fans have either moved into the 300 level or into other locations, and a lot of the seats downstairs are now empty. I got to see the Upper Deck Heroes baseball game earlier, which was a lot of fun tonight. Good ball game. Baseball and a swing and a miss. Struck him out. Threw it right by him. Strikeout number two for Corson. You know, that Greg Gross, he was hard on Larry Anderson. Now here's a here's a fastball. Up a little bit and had pretty good movement on the front for Corson. Greg Gross was on Larry Anderson. He said, yeah, anybody can play until they're 40 years old if they do it the way you do it. I mean, you pitch one time and you go on the DL for two weeks. <laughs> so, you know, if that was the way everybody did it, they could, everybody could play until they were 40. I'd say they had a couple of world-class needlers in him and Joe LaFay here tonight. Yes, sir. Gross and LaFay together were tough. Thompson pops it up playable. Who wants it? Santiago, the catcher. And Benito makes the play in fair territory, two away. The thing about Gross was, I mean, so quiet, you never would suspect. Everybody thinks this all-American, nice-looking, uh, quiet guy. Shoot. Oh, he was tough. <laughs> I mean, and biting. World-class <laughs> <laughs> Biting. Yeah. You can throw some stuff on you, you just shut up. If somebody has weak stuff, there's De Leon warming up. Well, we we'll wonder what that means. Terry Mulholland has struggled through five so far tonight. Philly's only got five out of Rivera last night. Jose De Leon's coming in this ball game. Matisse swings and misses at a breaking ball. He singled his last time up off Richie Lewis. He flied out his first time up, moved to run at a third. And he can look bad on some pitches. I tell you that first ball, curveball, in the dirt, swing at him, remind me of someone else I know. Uh, <laughs> did he play tonight? <laughs> Briefly and ineffectively in that first game? Ineffectively? That's not right. Look at that ball scooting. A great play by Weiss. Safe. Boy, Batiste just beat that wall. Weiss can play some shortstop. That was a good play. The reason Batiste almost didn't make it was because he thought it was going to get through. Slowed down. Looked to make his turn at, at first base. You'll, you'll see Weiss diving there. See, the key to that play is how fast he gets up. He's up and fires it over there. Batiste gets it by a step. But, man, he thought it was through. He was thinking about, well, how big a turn should I take at first base? I hit that ball pretty good, didn't I, after having such a bad swing? Morandini, the batter. Mickey over one tonight with a sacrifice fly and a run batted in his 14th of the year. Terry Mulholland is on deck. There's another base hit up the middle. Carr onto it quickly, so Baptiste will have to stop at second. Phillies with two on and two outs for Mulholland, one for two in the game. Well, we will be seeing him. Look, here comes Ruben Amaro out to bat for him. Warren Dean likes that ball down. He just goes down real nice, not uppercut, but just sort of volleys it in the center field. Well, this game has been a struggle for Terry Mulholland, and he is going to leave for Amaro as we look at Warren Dean. Here's a De Leon is coming into the game. Ruben Amaro, his second at bat since coming back from Scranton Wilkesbury, he popped up as a pinch hitter the other night. Ruben. Uh, 
in the minor leagues this year in 56 games, batted 273 with three homers and 17 runs batted, and he stole 11 bases. Including with the Phillies all of last year. The Phillies have really not decided what they're going to do with him, whether he's going to play. They may need him against left-handers because of the injury to Chamberlain. The one thing they know, they're getting a solid defensive player. Foul away. So, you know, he keeps their options open. Bring up a switch hitter. And Terry Mulholland leaves after just five innings tonight. Eight hits, two earned runs. I think if we learn anything from uh, Jim Fergosi's style of management, and that's uh, the importance he places on versatility, being able to put the guy out there that's hot or whatever. There's Terry. He said right on he was struggling a little bit and you can see after five innings he's out of there. Has a chance to win the ball game as he leaves with the Phillies ahead by three runs. Romero broke his bat. That's a delay as Ruben is headed back to the dugout for some new lumber. Well, how the guy the Phillies don't necessarily score a lot of runs for anyway. There's Joe Clint warming up. That's the only left hander that Renee Latchman has in his bullpen. They had other left-handers early in the year that haven't worked out for them. To Weiss, he will flip the red to and that'll do it for the Phillies here in the fifth. No runs, two hits, no errors, and two left. We're through five. Phils with a new pitcher coming on. 45, even 45, eight, even 48, but fan, 4700, out of Paul, and Tanya, 4700, half. What'll it be, Phyllis? Make it a Bud Light. Sorry. This is the last one. Well, I think I've been well, to take that one. What do you want to give? Four, I'm a two, and a ten, give me ten, a twenty big, give me twenty now, thirty, give me thirty now, forty big, give me forty now, fifty, give me fifty now, sixty big, give me sixty now, seventy, give me seventy now. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Bud, Bud Light, please. Sorry, boys. This is the last one. It's often taken for granted, yet it's as precious as the very air we breathe. It's called freedom. And it's what inspired Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield to create the new personal choice, a health plan that offers people the low costs of an HMO without asking them to give up what they value most, their freedom. Personal choice, the health plan that controls costs, not people. like having a Phillies ticket window come right to your home. Call 463-1000 and reserve your tickets in advance. No rushing, no waiting, no hassle. 463-1000. It's like having a Phillies ticket window right in your home. Don't forget, we'll have the business person special for you on PRISM at 12.30 on Wednesday afternoon. Greg Maddox and the Atlanta Braves in town. The pitchers for that game for Atlanta, John Smoltz for the Phillies, Ben Rivera. If you want to see Greg Maddox pitch, he's going to go on Monday night here at Veterans Stadium. Maddox, 6-5 and five in a disappointing season. As he certainly has not done all the things they thought he would do. Well, he hasn't gotten much support from the offense down there. And, uh, in Atlanta, but it's a long way to go. And you know that he's going to have a stretch where he gets hot. And he's going to be tough to deal with. Him. Let's put it this way. I don't think there's any team wouldn't want to have him around no matter what kind of year he's having. That's the search. He is a quality pitcher. Jose De Leon, the pitcher there. The number is on Jose. He's been in two games this year against Florida. He got that spot start when Mulholland was having foot trouble. It started on the 19th of May at Florida. Had a no decision in the Phil's 5-3 loss. Six innings, three hits, two earned runs. He walked two, struck out five. He pitched a scoreless inning here the other night, Thursday night against Florida. In that game won by the Marlins, 4-1. So for the second straight night, the Phillies start have gone after five innings as Santiago bails on a breaking ball. It's inside ball one. Last night, Mark Davis went two and Larry Anderson went two. Jim Fergosi will need the bullpen again. The Phillies have had the luxury of their starters pitching a lot of innings for them this year. Santiago gets out front and rips a foul. Benito will be followed by Junior Felix and then Alex Arias. 
You know, they were hitting the ball hard off of Terry Mulholland, so now Fergosi brings in De Leon from the right side to counter their left-handed bats. And it should be a pretty good move. They have four switch hitters in the lineup. Breaking ball and a swing and a miss by Santiago. Benito got on on an infield hit his first time up, scored a run. He's grounded to third. Chase the breaking ball. He got it. Off speed pitch, and he went after it. He'll throw fastball, fork ball, breaking ball. And Benito's I don't know what that miss. was. It was spinning, and he took a lot off of it. We'll see Santiago swings and misses. Boy, I tell you, he just has trouble picking up De Leon. There's no, no question about it. I mean, the first pitch that he threw, that breaking ball, he almost ran out of there thinking it was going to hit him and just missed for a ball. Here's Junior Felix, the switch hitter. He'll turn around about left handed off De Leon. He is one for two tonight. Fly ball and a single to center. Larry Rosen has a mining the miners report coming up on a local guy from University City area, so stay tuned after this half inning. De Leon throws two fastballs to Felix and misses. Now the rain is just about stopped. A lot of people heading back to their seats. He had about 20, 25 minutes of some pretty heavy rain, but the game was never interrupted. Yeah, it looks like a lot of people stayed around. Saturday night. Don't have to worry about work tomorrow. Yes, by right, two call. Okay, there we go. People heading back down to their seats. Larry's ball. Oh, no. <laughs> At least she's not using the jersey to wipe the seat anyway. Well, Larry Boa's jerseys. Two balls and two strikes. Felix with a line drive to right. Here comes Eisen right. He glides under it, makes a play. Two down. Two up and two down here in the sixth inning. De Leon, Jose, is six foot three, 226 pounds. He is now 32 years of age out of Rancho Viejo, La Vega, Dominican Republic. Spent most of his childhood, though, in North Jersey and now lives in Boca Raton. <laughs> Jose is one of the most popular guys in this ball club. A lot of people are happy right now that he's pitching well so they can keep him around. He was struggling for a while. They weren't able to use him. He's a very positive influence on a lot of the younger players. Right. The Latin players in particular, I saw him in spring training, the relationship he had with some of them, which was, uh, you know, real good to see. This guy doesn't seem to ever have a bad day. He's always laughing and smiling. Not when he's pitching. One ball and one strike. Arias pops it up. Playable right side. Who wants it? Cruck the call. John Cruck in foul territory. Makes the play. And Jose has a strong sixth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. And nobody left on base. There's your scorer heading to the bottom of the sixth time now for Miami the Miners. As Larry Rosen has a fascinating profile on a young man who went from 38th in Parish in West Philly to the Phillies farm system. Martinville's Tom McClawn. The dream has now begun in earnest for Tom McGlawn, who may carry a little piece of all of us who has ever dreamed. <coughs> McGlawn is a 23-year-old second base prospect, but so much more. He grew up at 38th and Parrish Streets in West Philadelphia, played at University City High School, paid his own way to play baseball at Bethune-Cookman before getting the smallest chance. Well, I was at Veterans Stadium, and uh, I had to try out just myself and the, um, the head people, and we had a tryout, and they liked what they seen. They signed me. 
At Cookman, Tom had been an outfielder, but as a pro, he'll play second base. He was signed late last September, spent this entire spring working on his skills, and now has finally been assigned to formally begin his professional career and take one step into turning that dream into a reality with the Martinville Phillies. Hey, Phillies Dream Week is coming up, and those roster spots are filling up quickly, so make that call as soon as possible and have one of the greatest weeks of your life down in Clearwater, Florida. You'll stay right on the Gulf of Mexico and play at the Phillies facilities, and it is some kind of good time. Call 938-1200. That's 215-938-1200. Dream Week during the month of February in Clearwater, Florida. Greg Briley will move into the game now and play right field in a double switch. And the new pitcher is the left-hander Joe Clink. There you see the numbers on Clink. That was a nice piece on mining the miners there. I mean, for those kids who should never give up and always want a chance, I mean, a lot of people are saying, boy, I'd like to someday make it to the big leagues and pursue that dream. It takes a lot of hard work. It takes breaks, but you got to be out there uh, pushing it and pushing it and hope that you get your opportunity. Good to see someone from Philadelphia doing that. Young man who just came out here in a one-man tryout camp and impressed the Phillies brass, and they signed him. And as Larry reported in that report, he is down in Martinsville. Guy can run a little bit. Yeah, you saw him drop that bunt in the piece there, so. Here we go to the top of the Phillies order as the Marlins use their fourth pitcher of the ball game, the left-hander Joe Clink. Here's Lenny Dykstra. So the numbers on Clink, who was born in Johnstown, 5'11", 175 pounder, out of the Oakland Athletics Organization. He also pitched for the Mets in their farm system and in the big leagues for the Minnesota Twins, briefly. Dykstra takes a strike call. Lenny tonight is homered to lead off the game. He singled and scored in the second, and he singled in the fourth. Look at his first. 32 games and what he's done since and he's up to 288 said he'd be at 300 by the end of June and today is June 19th and he's on schedule. Well we don't have any reason to doubt him <laughs> really he, the way he's come on. Talk about picking up the pace. Lost on the shallow left field. Conine comes on the left fielder grabs it one away. I think he's going to be frustrated with that at bat. And you think, well, guy has a couple of hits, you know, that, hey, that's not going to hurt him. But those good hitters, a 300 hitter has to stay focused all the time, every at bat. If you have two, you got to go out and want three. And if you get that third one, go for four. Yeah, he had a little pull on swing on that one. He did. left hander. Riley, by the way, bats ninth in the lineup, and Clink is now hitting sick as Duncan fouls one out of play. Mariano had a big bases loaded single in the second inning. He is one for three tonight. The RBIs for Duncan, numbers 28 and 29. He did. He took Armstrong to the limit. It was a 3 2 pitch that he lined in the left field. Two runs were scoring with the bases loaded. Phillies lead it by three at 5 to 2 here in the sixth. Duncan fouls it in and out of the mid of Santiago. in the six John Kruk on deck. Phillies about hit the Marlins 10 to 8. Beats it foul. Click has some interesting mannerisms. Uh, noticed that when he was pitching down in Florida against the Phillies. Seems like after every pitch he wears his cap way back and after he delivers the pitch he kind of tips it. <laughs> it's not like it's fallen off or anything. He just kind of reaches up and gives a little curtain call. Use the turf, but he won't get it. Mariano Duncan with an infield hit. It took two skids, and Duncan was able to beat him. I tell you, Duncan took a full swing at that pitch. Also, it's a good play, good backhand, but not enough footwork so that he has a, the ability to make a strong throw. So he ends up bouncing it over there. He's a natural shortstop. Is Arias playing at third base? And as Gary said, he didn't use his feet well enough to get anything on that. He needed to get that over there on one hop. 
struck the batter. John tonight, one for two with an RBI hit and a walk. Short stops because their throws are so long, and a lot of times they, they really work on quickness. You know, and you'll see Ozzie Smith do it, where you just get rid of the ball so quickly that you get the ball there before the runner gets there. It's a little tough at third base. Struck with 57 walks on the year to lead the league. And the ball is beaten in the hole to right field on a base. And that's why guys love being left-handed hitters with a man on first. Right, because you can get a hit on a ball that's normally an out. But John Crook, who usually swings at strikes, he swung at a ball that was up and fell off and was able to pull it through that hole thanks to having a runner on first base. Watch where this pitch is and watch the swing he takes way inside. He's probably looking to hook something there with that big hole on the right side. He did. Right fielder Riley duly into the game on it quickly, and that made Duncan stop at second. Dalton 0 for 3 tonight. Aaron hit a shot his last time up, run down by Carr in left center. Clint throws a lot of sidearm breaking balls. He just threw one there and missed. He has nice delivery, but when you throw that breaking ball, you're left-handed. You know, you throw it away from the left-handed hitter who has a tendency to bail out a little bit. If you can get it on the outside part of the plate, then you have something going. But if you're going to throw that sidearm pitch to a left-hander and leave it inside, well, while he's bailing, that ball's going to stay right there for him to line somewhere. Very hittable. Yes. Threw a fastball there and got it over one and one. Phil's now with 12 hits in the game. Matt Williams has hit another home run. His 21st of the year. So he at least has one more RBI at this point in Dalton. They came into the game tonight tied for the league lead with 57. Brought that left-hander in because of Dykstra, Kruk, Dalton, Eisenreich, Thompson. Duncan in the two-hole to break it up a little bit. Here's the one-two to Darren. Foul tip swung on, struck him out. There was one of those middle end ones you were talking about. Well, that one was that had some uh, some movement way out of the strike zone. You see, Darren, I think, is looking for a breaking ball away. He gets one that kind of hangs on the inside. And he gets away with it. It's definitely out of the strike zone. Not where he wanted it. Right. With the power hitters, you want to try and tie them up. But you want to use a fastball to do it. <laughs> Not the, the hanging breaking ball. Eisenreich, the batter, Jim one for three on the night. With a base hit, a run scored. He's lined out and struck out. He's facing his fourth different pitcher in four at bats. He has faced Armstrong, Lewis, Corsi, and now Clink. And there is Matt Turner starting to loosen up, a right hander. 12 man pitching staff for these Marlins. They can run a lot of guys out of that bullpen. What happens is, whoop, snap throw to second and Duncan back. They can get short a little, short a little time when they're trailing because they don't have, they have that one less extra man off the bench. Yeah, that's true. San Diego, he must have something going with Duncan because the last time he threw from his knees, it was Duncan down at second base. That was fairly close. Yeah. How can you throw a ball from your knees? What an arm he has. 2-0 to Eisenreich two on and two outs and Clink misses again with Thompson waiting on deck it's three and oh I think it really points out the importance of the pitcher holding the runner on I mean because his numbers are down as far as how the percentage of guys he's thrown out he has a super arm and good mechanics back there Charlie Huff doesn't help him much I would think. <laughs> it's not going to help your percentage well, I think a lot of young pitching will will hurt you in that regard I mean even some of the veterans that get so into their habits that you know that they don't give the catcher a chance either well, now they're loaded with two outs for Thompson. Melda's walk scored a run, popped up twice. Thompson had in that bat on Clink down in Florida and is 0 for 1 against him. Is loaded to Thompson and he gets a fastball over for a strike. Duncan, the runner at third, Truck at second, and Jim Eisenreich on at first in a 5 2 game. Phil's lead it in the sixth. See them 
playing Thompson up the middle with the middle infielders. Arias well off the line at third. Car shading towards left center. Little chopper to Renteria. He'll flip the second and get Eisenreich, and that'll do it. We'll see Gary Maddox here on Wednesday afternoon. No runs. Two hits, no errors, and the Phils will leave them loaded. They lead it 5-2. You know, a lot of people think you have to be a pro to shop at Sherwin Williams. Actually, you just have to want to paint like one. That's why they're having a do-it-yourself sale. Their best-selling A100 exterior flat is only $13.99, and Classic 99 interior flat is just $12.99. It ends June 26th. So, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you better get going. I'm a real wild one. Wild one. Comes the clean, fresh taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Last up, Southport. Bud Light delivered. I'm a wild one. The first place filling the best team in baseball, swinging, sliding, and hurling their way to the top. The right attitude, the right direction, the right team at the right time. There's never been a season like this one, and there's never been a better time for Prism. With more exclusive Phillies home games than any other channel on TV, Prism is your home game home of the Phillies. Prism, your baseball channel in the summer of 93. The time has come for the cordless power roller from Wagner. It's so quick and easy, it can cut painting time in half. So get your hands on a real value, because the value of Wagner keeps on rolling. Well, one of the most popular events of the year is coming up, the annual ALS Night. The Phillies battle against that dreaded disease, ALS. It'll be on Monday night, August the 2nd, beginning at 6 o'clock. The night includes autograph booths, silence, and live auctions, fun and games. The tickets go on sale June 24th. Call the Phillies at 463-1000 or in person at the vet. There'll be a limited amount of tickets on sale. So make sure you're one of the first. Don't get shut out and order those tickets when they go on sale June 24th. That should be a huge, huge night. And, and you know the, the big vet. part of that, too, is you can come get your favorite Phillies autograph from your favorite guy for very nominal price. That's a fun night. Very nominal. It really is. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the way the Phillies are going and with the interest in this baseball team, you better get those tickets quickly. There's Greg Briley, who came in on the double switch, now batting in the nine hole. Walt Weiss fouls off the bunt. Weiss on a good night, two for two with a run batted in. Briley out of the Seattle organization. Pretty good level left-handed hitter. Weiss checks on a high pitch from De Leon. Jose working his second inning of relief behind Mulholland. We are in the seventh inning. Jose had a perfect sixth. Here comes that Matt Turner in from the bullpen. They're going to go to another pitcher, it would appear. That will be number five tonight, used by Renee Latchman. Well, I have to tell you, partner, I had to take away from the glow of the Phillies' impending victory here, leading five to two <laughs> in the top of the seventh. But going back to the executive dining room with all those guys and chit chatting for a little bit, talking to Schmidt and talking as we did on the air, then having him and Tacoby get together and saying, Jacoby saying, I wanted to choke him because I let him hit a fastball right there with nothing on it, and he hits it up the middle. I want him to hit it out of the home run to be dramatic, you know? Yeah, Teak tried to groove yeah. one for him. And then listening to Von Hayes talk about stuff and Bob Dernier, and, and, and it was very exciting. And Paul Owen says, this one is a high fast. How about going after that pitch? De Leon doing a pretty good job. He's retired all four batters he's faced. Two out of them, two of them by strikeouts, one out. Well, look at this is where the batter really helps the pitcher. See how this ball is out of the strike zone? Weiss going after really a, a very bad pitch. Um, maybe he thought it was going to come down a little bit, but that's way out of the strike zone. So when you do that, you're just helping that guy on the mound because that ball is about six inches above the strike zone. Here are the numbers on Greg Briley. This will be his first at bat in the ball game. Breaking ball misses inside. Briley also being used as a pinch hitter. He's six for 21 in that ball with one run batted in. At least uh, we're talking about maybe acquiring Briley during spring training. That didn't work out. I'm thinking about another left-handed bat and an extra outfielder. Kruk will need De Leon. Jose gets there. Briley can run a little bit. 
and two up and two down in the seventh. De Leon really starting to pitch well. Had a little chat with him after the game over at Jaworski's new hotel. He told me he starts to feel he's feeling very comfortable on the mound now. He feels like he's got pretty good rhythm. And he's pitched well in his last couple outings. And we see Cruck make a nice play. The turf is very wet. So you got to be careful on those grounders because the ball can skid a little bit. And De Leon quickly got over to first base. And nice toss by Cruck. So even though it looked like a routine grounder, the turf out there is still very damp, very wet. And anything can happen because there's a lot of dirt off the first base area that has been kicked onto the turf. And the ball could hit a pebble or whatever and take a bad hop. See that moth trying to invade Jose De Leon's ear as he was standing out there and he brushed it away. There's the dirt Jay's talking See, about. And, and that's why I'm saying you, you can't call it a routine grounder because a ball could hit one of those little dirt clods and kick who knows which way. Chuck Carr swings and misses at an off speed pitch. De Leon throwing the fastball, forkball, and curveball. His forkball used to be a real hard pitch. Now he still throws it. He has a lot of speed on. Yeah, and, and he, you know he has a tendency to bounce it once in a while, but it's more of a true off-speed pitch for him now. And really, like you said, he uses that as his changeup. Carr takes it just outside. He is 0 for 3 tonight. He struck out, flied out, grounded out. He's a switch hitter batting left-handed for the first time. 230 left-handed hitter, 316 right-handed. Pretty good fastball there mm -hmm. and just missed. Two outs, nobody on base in the seventh. De Leon on in his second inning of work. Bills lead it by three at five to two. One of the keys to, to pitching is throwing the batter's timing off, getting the batter to be a little bit out of sequence with his drive. This will be a tough play because this guy can fly. And De Leon got there. Nice play by Cruck and De Leon as he got him off balance and he hit a weak ground ball to first. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. Seventh inning stretch time here at the bat. As we watch this good play that ends the inning, Phil's lead it five to two. Highly sensitive microphones and even stethoscopes were used to isolate noises in the new Intrepid. Triple sealed doors, specially designed tires, and a unique muffler system were used to quiet them. You said your next car had to be quiet. <coughs> Excuse me. And boy, did we listen. Intrepid. This changes everything. Upper Deck asked a few average card collectors whose cards they collect. I collect Steve Young. I collect endorsements. I collect back doctors. Surgeons. Rings. I collect fines. I just collect fishing lures. The musky dingbat. Ding 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 ding, 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 I have a 56 powder blue Chevy. Powder, powder, powder blue. A Ferrari. I collect Reggie. Rolls Royce. Reggie. 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 Really? Not, not, not. Yeah. The smooth. Original interior, original carpet, drives like a dream. To soar with eagles, be the best. To win the industry's highest awards for quality, commit to excellence. Provide superior quality products and have the strength to offer them at more than 12,500 locations nationwide. More than any other major brand. Discover for yourself the difference quality can make. Fly with the new superpower. Hello, I'm Dick Vermeil. What is the most common back injury? Muscle strain probably is the most common and least serious back injury. Well-conditioned muscles will keep your back strong and less prone to injury. One more reason for a regular exercise program and weight control. Howdy, everybody. It's the second midweek midday, and it's a terrific game to make plans come out. That's this Wednesday, June 23rd at 1235, the Business Person Special. So where are your tickets? Make those excuses now. Call 463-1000. This Wednesday, Chris and I will bring it to you all right here on PRISM. As we go to the bottom of the seventh inning, Phillies lead it 5-2. to two. And the new pitcher, Matt Turner, and Batiste hits a hard ground ball, fielded on one hop by Arias, who throws him out. One up and one down here in the seventh. There are the numbers on the right-hander, Matt Turner. Turner with a fastball, it sinks. He's, he's got a good hard sinker. He also has a slider. He throws it very hard. It's a little tight, and he has a split finger pitch. He likes to pitch in and out. He'll also change speeds. That, that's what makes him somewhat effective is the fact that he can change speeds 
with the in and out fastball and using that sinker to try and keep it away from the left handed batter as Morandini now waits to see what happened oh, no. to Kim Batiste as Jeff Cooper Mel Roberts talked to him. It could be that hamstring, huh? No, oh, no. Billy said, you know, he's been playing really well down there and doing a good job at third in a position where the Phillies are really in trouble. And he has had a lot of trouble with his legs. And it looks like he might have blown that tire again. Oh, no. Well, sometimes when you have wet turf, things can happen. You can't tell really as he's running down the line, but you can see as he crosses the base path, he's really slowed up a lot. Normally, Kim runs pretty good, and he runs through the base, so somewhere close to first base, something had to happen to that hamstring. And he has come out of the game. Well, he just grabbed his knee as he went down the steps, too. You know, as he went down the steps, he touched his knees. So we'll just wait and see. <laughs> Mickey Morandini takes a pitch over for a strike. Morandini tonight is one for two with a run batted in on a sacrifice fly. So just hope for the best for Kim Batiste. Ground ball to first as Destrade gets it. Morandini hit it right on the nose and right at him. And here comes Jose De Leon. He's going to get in that bat and pitch. Well, Jim Fergosi hopes three innings. <laughs> That's the master plan yes. because if Mitch Williams could pitch tonight. That's the whole idea. De Leon this year is 0 for 2 as a batter, both of them strikeouts. So say has never been much of a hitter. This is Matt Turner, if he looks like a big guy to you, he is. 6'5, 215 pounder from Lexington, Kentucky. He's been in the Atlanta and Houston organization. This is his first trip to the major leagues. We'll have to make a decision on who can play third. Play third. Could be. Uh, well, they have Manto up here who's played some third down at the Triple A. Duncan can play third. Millette yeah. could play third. Yeah, Dun Duncan doesn't want to play third, though. Might be Joe Millette. He played third up in New York a few weeks ago. And a swing and a miss by Jose De Leon and a strong inning for Matt Turner. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. Through seven, fills five, Marlins two. Jim, give me a Bud Light. We're all out. When it comes to clean, fresh taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, Bud Light delivers. Can Texaco System 3 gasolines help reduce an engine's filthy deposits? You know, it's no illusion. System 3 helps make filthy deposits... What are y'all doing that for? Oh, ...disappear. Where's my car? All it took was System 3, and now my Bronco takes off like my Thunderbird. System 3 really whipped those filthy deposits. Well, I love it when she talks like that. When it comes to performance, in cars both new and old, you can count on every grade of Texaco System 3. Where's my car? You could go batty following the herd this summer. But really cool families visit the top seasonal water park in the country. Dorney Park and Wild Water Kingdom. It's where families go to have fun. Go play outside. You could try to keep the kids happy at home this summer. But really cool families visit the park for all ages. Dorney Park and Wild Water Kingdom. It's where families go to have fun. Go play outside. Dorney Park and Wild Water Kingdom, nearby in Allentown, PA. Here's your scoring summary through seven innings tonight. You see the Phillies had a big four-run second to put them out in front. That's where they are, five to two. Lenny Dykstra with a leadoff home run. His seventh of the year is 11th career leadoff homer. Arrestes Destrade, number six. And Mariano Duncan, a bases loaded two-run single in the midst of that bat around in the second when the Phillies scored four. They got five innings out of Terry Mulholland tonight. He struggled. And Jose De Leon has pitched two perfect innings. And Joe Millette will move into the game now to play third base for the Phils. Mitch Williams 
has been strolling around out in the bullpen. He would pitch the ninth inning if the Phillies can get through the eighth. Presently are in a save situation with the Phillies holding a three run lead. Rich Renteria, the batter, one for three. Facing De Leon for the first time tonight. Renteria, Conine, and Destrati. Right, right, and switch hitter. This ball will go to the crowd on the first base side. I haven't had the announced attendance yet, but it's a big one here tonight. The rain sent some people home or scurrying for cover for a while. It hasn't been raining for the last couple innings. They're still counting out in center. I can see that little guy with the clicker. Yeah, Richard Dietz is out there. That, oh, that's Richard. I guess he's so far away. He looks a little. Yeah, you count. You don't. You count. <laughs> you get a hole in your ticket. That's a comp. You count. One ball and two strikes now on Renteria. Yes, another pitcher is up. That's Trevor Hoffman, the right-hander. These guys are determined to use the whole pen tonight. Carpenter pitched three last night, so he won't get into the game, you wouldn't think. And the Phillies hope they don't see Harvey. One out as Thompson makes the play, and seven in a row retired by De Leon. De Leon, a good off-speed pitch. He really pulled the string on that one. Renteria way out in front, hit it off the end of the bat. As we look down, the batter's box is pretty much obliterated. <laughs> you don't see any lines when they put all that absorbent sand out there to soak up the moisture. I guess they just pretty much killed the the batter's box area. Jeff Conine takes a breaking ball inside. Conine tonight 0 for 2. He's grounded out, grounded into a double play and walked. And there is the yeah, look at that. water absorbing material that they toss around. Of course, you got to give a lot of credit to the ground crew. Ralph and company does an outstanding job each time. They get the guys out there real quick. Ralph Brand Japani. That was head ground keeper and his ace staff down there in the tunnel. Now they used to put Ralph's name on the back of his uh, on the back of his jersey but then people started standing up and putting their hand over one eye and reading them reading the numbers like they were in an ophthalmologist's office. So they, they got a lot of vowels in that name. A lot of vowels. Looks like an eye chart on the back of his shirt. Three balls and no strikes to Conai. There's a fastball right down the pipe. Always love to watch Ed Montague call strikes because he's a left hander. <laughs> And when that right hand hitter's up, yeah. he just flicks that flicks right it. hand out. <laughs> it's tough for him. And he doesn't call a strike on that. It's low and outside. And ball four. First base runner allowed by De Leon. And it's on a walk. And here comes Destrade. One for three with a home run. Coming off Terry Mulholland. Here come the attendance figures. Wow. Wow. Well, they got to 50. 50,391 tickets sold That's for the game here tonight. Wow. What? What kind of fans this club has? Wow. So out here tomorrow at the vet. So if you don't have tickets or you don't have them on hold waiting for you, please don't come down tomorrow. They will be ready from 9 o'clock on, though, according to the ticket office people. I, I do think, though, that Bob Euchre called in and canceled his one seat out there in center. <laughs> so there might be that seat somewhere under the Marlboro sign, dead center field in the top upper deck. Yeah. Yeah, that, uh, well, out in the corner there, yeah, by 745. I think Euchre canceled that one. So there might be there might be one left up there. Now, De Leon might be running out of gas as we as the Phillies will warm up David West, the left-hander, and Larry Anderson, the right-hander. Anderson pitched two innings in the ball game last night. You know, it has been a very humid day and night. So see the trouble that the Marlins pitcher got into Armstrong in the first couple innings, and Mulholland wasn't able to go more than five. He struggled a lot. The humidity has taken its toll on the pitching staff tonight for both clubs. Estrada will look for fastball to drive here. Check swing base hit. Conine takes a big turn and will stop at second. Now with Santiago coming up, we're probably going to see Larry Anderson. If Jim Fergozzi thinks he has anything left in him after this the two what, innings. what you call one of those excuse me. I, I don't want to swing, but I'm still going to take the base hit. And you know what? I don't know a big league hitter that wouldn't take 100 of those every year. That's a pitch where he was fooled. He was way out in front. He tried to hold up his swing. It just so happens that that the contact between the bat and the ball was perfect. There's a little lump liner right up the middle and he ended up with the base hit. Well, they could be stalling out there right now. There's John Vukovic and 
Johnny Padres and Larry Bowen and Dennis Mickey and the skipper in the background. There goes the call to the pen. To the pen to see if they're ready. And here comes Fergus. So they were just waiting to get Anderson ready. You figured if Anderson had anything left and could pitch, he was going to come in and pitch to Santiago. De Leon does a good job, but he looks like he's just out of gas in this inning. Well, we mentioned about the humidity. There goes Jimmy, motioning for the right-hander. He continues to wear that jacket, too. It's been a lucky jacket all year, and I'm telling you, he's pushing <laughs> it on these nights. Well, wait till, wait till Wednesday. We'll see how lucky. How about tomorrow? There goes Jose De Leon off after doing a good job for the Phillies. Phillies lead it by a score of five to two. A pitching change, Larry Anderson on his way in, and we'll be back right after this. A truly sophisticated automobile can tell you a lot about itself. In the placement of its controls and switches, in their feel and ease of operation, in the information the car gives you. Every thoughtful detail of the Intrepid's instruments ensures that you'll never be in the dark. Intrepid. This changes everything. I remember last year, honey, when we were moving. Right. Well, she called us and said if we put both our new house and car policies with her, we would save money. Well, we have so many choices at Nationwide, and my job is to make you aware of your options. She's always there with an answer. That's the way we're trained, to be very knowledgeable and to be there when people really need you the most, and that's important. Agents like Margaret are Nationwide. Nationwide is on your side. Now it's time for the Rolaids Relief Man of the Year. We'll check that out, these numbers, because Rolaids spells relief. Looking at the National League, Randy Myers having a heck of a year for the Cubs. Rod Beck, outstanding for San Francisco. And Brian Harvey, we've been talking about him the last couple of days. So we hope you do not see him tonight. In the American League, Rick Aguilera on another good season. Jeff Montgomery for Kansas City. Then Greg Olson and Dwayne Ward, the new closer for the Toronto Blue Jays this year. Up there with 46 points. You know, you got to think that you got to know that Myers is having a great year because the Cubs have not won that won that many games, and for Myers to have that many saves, he's got to be figuring in what about uh, 40 some percent of their wins, maybe even more. Maybe even more. Oh, probably more. Maybe over 50. Here's the veteran Larry Anderson, who was introduced with the 83 club tonight because he was a member of that team. There are the numbers on Andy. He pitched two innings here last night, two hits. Two strikeouts. He'll be facing Benito Santiago, a former teammate of his. He did not face Santiago in the ball game last night because Benito had already been given the night off by Bruce Freming at that point. How about this? Our uh, prolific producer, Larry Rosen, just looked it up. Myers has saved 68% of their games. That's what he's been involved in. So 22 pretty, of pretty 32. High I'd say he's having an outstanding year for the Cubs. Coming over from San Diego. So Santiago, the batter, he represents a tying run. Conine on at second and Destrade at first. Benito one for three on the night. That could be a double play ball. Boy, Anderson couldn't have gotten it done any better than that. One pitch, two outs. Talk about doing your job. In the inning, no runs, one hit. No errors and one man left on base. And the Phillies lead this game by a score of five to two. An inning ending double play. The shopping center, nine out of ten people use. The genuine Bella Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. Nine out of ten use it. No other book can match it. A Bell Atlantic Company. May I help you, sir? Yeah, I'll have a Coca-Cola. You sure you want a Coke? Yeah, I want a Coke. <laughs> okay, pal. Oh! Huh? You order a Coke? It, it tastes good. I didn't oh! care if it was a Coke. You just want oh, a Coke. Oh, oh, I'll just, I'll just have a cola. I'll just have a cola. I'll just have a cola. Need a drink, sir? I'll just have a. I'll just have a coke. Ooh. Ah. You hear that, guys? A Coca-Cola. <laughs> 
See ya, pal. Oh. <laughs> In the summer of 93, only one channel will bring you exciting, fist-pumping, first-place Phillies action. And over 100 star-studded, critically acclaimed, blockbuster, commercial-free movies. Prism. The only channel with exclusive Phillies home games and over 100 movies a month. It's the only place to be in the summer of 93. Hello, folks. We want you to know that this copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Phillies and is intended solely for the private, non-commercial use of our audience. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form or otherwise used without the express written consent of the Phillies. So in layman's terms, that means don't do something you're not supposed to do. Because Big Brother is watching. The Big Brother. By the way, we want to thank Muggsies who saved our life. They just brought up all kinds of cheesesteaks and chicken cheesesteaks for us and for Richie and for Harry and group over there. So Muggsies at Pass Junk and Ta Tasker, we want to thank you for that wonderful aroma in our booth. It's just permeating the booth there, and we have people walking in wondering, what is that smell? Yeah, we'll work on one of them later. Yes, I, I have a feeling that uh, it's getting late, and I didn't get a chance to eat since about 9 o'clock, so other than... Lenny Dykstra, the batter. Dykstra on a big night. Lenny, three for four with a lead-off homer. His average steadily climbing, coming into the game batting at 280, and he's now at 287. He's slowly getting up there, isn't he? I think by the end of June, he's got to be at 310. He, he said he's going to be at 300. Mm -hmm. Jose De Leon, an outstanding job tonight for the Phillies. Two and a third, a hit, one walk, and two strikeouts. Larry Anderson coming on for two thirds, and Mitch is starting to heat up in the bullpen. He'll be coming on to pitch the ninth. The score stays this way because it is a save situation. Matt Turner on in his second inning of work. Goes a sinker ball up there, and Lenny says, Good pitch. He didn't think it was. He struck out or uh, flight out his last time up off the left-hander Clink. Turner, the fifth pitcher used tonight by the Marlins. Armstrong, the starter, just going an inning and two-thirds. Bullpen's done a good job. They haven't given up anything. Pop up foul. That's in the booth. That's in here, folks. I got it right. Rolling around here. My toes. Where is it, Jenny? Tony's got it. Tony Irving has it, tosses it back to the crowd. Nice going, Tony. Let it go, Tony. You just knocked out two people. Fans love you for that. <laughs> Strike. Dykstra is gone. Couldn't check his swing. Strikeout number two for Matt Turner. Turner, as we mentioned, a very good sinking fastball here. He uses the split finger pitch, and the ball just breaks right down. Dykstra tried to hold up, thought it was inside, but was rung up anyway. Turner's done a great job. He's held opponents to a 186 average. And the last 43 people that have faced him. Good breaking ball, and Duncan swings and misses. One of those guys looks like his body's flying at you, and his arms dragging behind it. A little deceptive. There's another breaking ball, and he swings and misses. They put together a good bullpen. Yes, they have. You now I'm looking at uh, Turner's march again, and right-handers are only hitting 200 off him, four for 20. Duncan in the hole 0 and 2 with Cruck waiting on deck. I think it could be tough to get to right handers the way he comes from the side a little. Duncan hits it to right field. Riley has a beat on it. Wait. And there are two outs. He's got a little three quarter sling of the pitch. And that's where he gets that good use of the sinker away from the left hander. And then when he gets the left hander looking out of the plate looking for that sinker, he can either come in with a slider as we watch Mariano Duncan. Now watch where the pitch is right here. He runs the fastball in on it, but Duncan trying to go that way, keeps his weight back and drives the ball deep, but right at the right fielder. Cruck tonight two for three with an RBI. His average at 364. John came into the game at 364 in the National League. He's been hanging right around the top five all year. Just as he did last year when he led the league in hitting for a long time. When I walked over in the fifth inning over to the executive dining room, Smitty was still talking. How can John Cruck take a 3-0 pitch and drive yeah. it down the left field line? Yeah. Said, How do you hit a ball 3-0 the opposite way like a bullet? 
Well, when you're hitting 360, I guess you know how to do those things. I think a lot of hitting that Clark is just instinctive. Mm -hmm. He was he wanted to check on that, and then there was no way, and then he had that funky swing. One, two, and look at this, and he's no, trying to yeah. check, and he, there's no way he can stop that back. He couldn't even stop his body. Look at him laugh. He, he knew. He, he, knew, he knew how silly wow. that one looked. Yeah, sometimes you get good hitters guessing it, as he did there. That's about as bad of a bat as you'll see Kruk have facing that Matt Turner for the first time. He pitches another impressive inning. That's Turner. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We're heading for wild thing time. We're going to the ninth, 5-2 Philly. Can Texaco System 3 gasolines help make a difference in performance? System 3 performs in a car the way I perform in a car. With System 3, anybody can perform like Mario Andretti. But not in my county. <laughs> Every grade of Texaco System 3 performs in cars both new and old. They do? Well, no wonder we're getting the horsepower we should be getting. Isn't that right, Auntie? Count on System 3 for performance in your car. Dad, can you drive like Mario Andretti? The Phillies take on the West in seven big games. First, three with the Dodgers, Monday, July 5th, Tuesday, July 6th, and Wednesday, July 7th, all at 735. Followed by four against the Giants with Bonds, Clark, and Williams. Thursday, July 8th, and Friday, July 9th at 735. Saturday, July 10th at 3 o'clock. And then all kids 14 and under get a free batting practice jersey Sunday, July 11th at 135. Call 463-1000. From 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, right here in Pennsylvania. People are searching for new choices in health care. The costs are strangling me. Which inspired Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield to create the new personal choice. It seems like you always have to give something up. A health plan that gives people the benefits of an HMO. No one has the right to tell me what doctor I can see. Without asking them to give up their freedom. Personal choice. The health plan that controls costs, not people. Let's go to the National League scoreboard where Greg Jeffries had four hits today. Lee Smith a save number 20. Cardinals win. Pittsburgh over the Mets again. They continue to struggle. Jay Bell had a three-run triple in that one. Cincinnati with 19 hits as they beat the Dodgers. That game's in the bottom of the ninth at Montreal. Ron Gana home run number 16. Dodger or the Giants ahead of the Astros in the eighth. Matt Williams number 21, a three-run homer. Colorado pounding the Padres. It was just the opposite last night. Charlie Hayes does a three-run homer in that game. Detroit beats Milwaukee 10-7. New York over Minnesota. Toronto beat the Boston Red Sox at Sky Dome. Cleveland shuts out Baltimore. Kansas City shuts out Oakland at Oakland. And just underway out on the West Coast and at Seattle. No score in those ball games. And here's Mitch Williams making his first appearance of the season against a Florida ball club. Mitch is not allowed an earned run in five appearances in the month of June. Four and a third innings with five saves. And he's earned a save in 14 out of his last 16 chances. Brett Barbary will come up and bat now. Barbary batting for the pitcher Turner. It's a switch hitter. He played in the ball game last night at second base. And the first pitch from Williams is up high, ball one. It'll be Barbary. Arias and Weiss scheduled to bat here in the ninth off Williams. And very patiently, he takes two pitches and it's 2 and 0. The crowd already starting to murmur. Here's the 2 0. Break right down the middle for a strike. Uh huh. Larry Christensen drops in our group to say hi. The big tall bird is waving at us, now waving goodbye. Thanks for dropping in, Larry. Beats it foul third base side. Uh, we had him on uh, in the uh, upper deck game, uh -huh. interviewing him in the dugout, mm -hmm. and he showed how his elbow looks oh. like it's not connected anymore. My God, isn't that something? all over the place. Uh, and some of the guys I was talking to, Al Oliver, Bill Madlack, George Hendricks, and they can remember how hard Larry Christian used to throw them, you know, and they would come in here and they would see Steve Carlton and Larry Christensen and Jim Lonborg and, and you know, the guys that pitched back in those days, and, and when Larry showed them his arm, as you talked about, uh, they were flabbergasted. Yeah. They just couldn't believe it. 
he can straighten his arm out, but it moves all over the place. Here we go to Barbary. And this comes in high. Ball three. Three balls and two strikes. Barbary trying to get on, get something started for the Marlins here in the ninth inning. Phillies lead it five to two. Barbary, the leadoff batter, batting for Turner. Three two pitch on the way. Strike three called on the inside corner, and Barbary can't believe it. He screams at Ed Montague. Well, let's take a look and see what we think. The pitch by Williams started right at the inside part of the plate and does catch the corner. It looked as though it ended up inside, but it's where it crosses the plate, folks. It's not where the catcher catches the ball. Oh. And the ball did cross the corner of the plate, and it caught a good percentage of that corner. But it looked like it was inside because that's where Dalton ended up catching. And Barbary gave him a little off. Oh, come on. Uh -huh. the pitch is inside. Strike call. There's Barbary on the bench after the strikeout. Arias the batter. Two for three tonight with a couple of singles. Mitch with 19 saves on the year. Trying to make it 20. Phillies trying to go up two games to one in this series with the final game tomorrow afternoon. Charlie Huff pitching that game for Florida. And Tommy Green for the Phillies. Green's been a little shaky in his last couple outings, and he'd really like to get back on the winning track. Tommy losing his first ball game of the year the other night in Montreal. He's 8 and 1. Two balls and one strike to Arias. Fly ball center field deep, but a lot of room for Lenny. Backs up, waits, two out. And if you're going to let him hit long fly balls, center field's a place. Dykes are about, oh, 12 feet in from the warning track. If you look at center field, the sign says 408, but even though it's been a humid night and balls usually fly well, the rain has dampened it a bit now, and the ball is not carrying whatsoever. So if you're going to let him fly balls, you might as well go out there deep in the cavern of center field. Phillies trying to win their 47th game of the year and go 25 and 10 here at the back. Walt Weiss about it. We've just been handed a note that Atlanta did in fact beat Montreal by a score of four to three. So the Phillies could pick up a full game on the Expos. Which would put them 11 out. Well they have really run into some tough luck lately. They have not played well. They haven't got the hitting when they've needed it, and, and their pitching's faltered. Except, of course, the two of the three games that the Phillies were up there. And Martinez pitched a good game for him last night. He's been pretty solid. Two balls and no strikes down to Weiss with Greg Riley on deck. Two outs, nobody on base. Phillies lead at 5 to 2. Weiss has had a good night also. He gets two for three. Phillies trying to win a game for Terry Mulholland, who only went five tonight. He deserves one of those. Well, that has it. This ought to do it. Fires to first. That'll do it. Terry Mulholland's a nine-game winner, and Mitch picks up his 20th save of the year, and the Phillies have won two out of three in this series and lead the Cardinals still by nine and a half games. Well, that's amazing. 20 saves already, and we haven't even come to the All-Star break. He's on a pace. He'll have 45 saves by the end of the year. Mitch Williams gets the congratulations of his teammates. Good job by that guy, Lenny Dykes. Sure, the final of the Phillies, five, the Marlins, two. Back with a final word coming up right after this.